the wrong ear, you guys are arguing with each other. Uh, so this is this is most, <laughs> this is most people's problem to get. When you think of a version as a human being, you think of iterations, right? You think yep. of an iteration on an object, on a singular entity. That's the problem. So. Not okay. with most of our design stuff, but okay. Well, I'm just in general. Yeah, in I'm general. just saying in general, general, right? So you make uh, you make version two of Farkin, who's now this thing, right? Which you know, <laughs> right? You make version uh, two or version three of this thing, and that's how central version control systems work. Git, this whole thing is a version. This whole thing is a version. The the version in Git is completely abstracted. It's the state of everything at once. Right. Mm -hmm. And that makes so much more sense. It and does. that's what we're thinking, because we have a system to some people, of things. Yes. To a lot of other people. It we does. have a system of things, and I want to, uh, and so I have, yes. I have to press upon them, what is the, what is the, and you what know the default system Give, of things give me the state on. that was What's working for this release. The difference is you're a scientist. Uh. <laughs> when, when, as scientists, we think about the state of the system. Yeah. As computer science, we think about individual items. We're basically glorified. Computer scientists aren't thinking about state of systems as scientific processes. Mm -hmm. So for us, something like Git makes a whole lot more sense because you don't care about, well, that variable was there and that var variables on their own don't make any fucking sense. You need mm -hmm. the variable state of the whole system. Yes. So Git makes sense. But if you're not in that engineering science mindset, you're not thinking that way. Yeah. That that is the biggest battle with this is helpful dealing with people on versioning. Well, no, yeah, this is going to help <laughs> I think communicate to them a little bit better about what and our expectations some, are. There's been some uh, pushback against moving to a master slash dev branch type uh, branching strategy too in my place. We're like right just now, a yeah. little bit. Yep, we're okay. totally live. This is yeah. a great conversation. Uh, dev branches are wrong. <laughs> Very important. You should die. People what dev do. branches are wrong? Yeah, dev branches. Are Why? Wrong. Huh? Because we... they're just flat out wrong. There's well, Git flow, and Git flow is a horrendous bastardization of how things but, work. But we have a limited number of environments in a SaaS setting. Probably fine. So that we, so, such that we can't. What does the dev branch serve? It allows us to deploy. Careful test, test scenario. What stuff. you're saying right now is being yeah. recorded. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like. That's why I'm like stuttering. I'm like, yep, yep. what can I say? <laughs> a developer branch, a develop branch in general, allows you to deploy a specific thing. Yeah. Right. Like it lets you deploy much more this, much more one to one, one to one, one to one. When you're dealing with Git, what? No, 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 not one to one. It is though. Let me finish. When you're dealing with Git. Dev branches confound the issue because when somebody needs a dev branch to signify that that's where they should deploy things off of, what they don't understand is that at all times, Git is maintaining a history of the state of the system. So a developed right. branch is just a temporary tag. Right. So, but if that is the crutch that you're developing on, if that's the crutch that you're depending upon to talk to people about it, you're reinforcing the fact that they don't understand the thing that they're working with. If you're working with Git, you need to train to think about there's a master branch, it has a history. Sure, I can branch off of that for features and merge back in, but at any point in time, I can look and deploy. The right. dev branch makes no sense. So if you're using it properly, though, the dev but, branch doesn't effectively become any different than a feature branch. No, no, no. The, I, but the thing it gains you on top of that is yeah. that you can make it easier for, to work with merge long right. feature branch. And no, it doesn't. Because the long-lived feature branch and the definition of feature branches is they're supposed to finish. There's been a number of studies. That's why people are migrating away from Gitflow. It reinforces old stereotypes and fucks people up when they start working with Git or when they're working with Git. It's one of the most detrimental things you can do to a beginning developer is to give them a branch. Uh, because it reinforces uh, so the yeah. correct way of thinking about it. The incorrect way. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that was, uh, that's okay. I was just that's what Jake's uh, uh, hmm. mindset was for. You have to think about things as a constantly changing state of set of the system. Not you, you don't you don't write a paper and go, okay, I'm gonna put you in a copy machine and put you over here. That's not what you do. Because that, that's your dev branch. And then what you do is you occasionally update a page, pull that out, throw it on the copier, and then fold that in. 
That is a dev branch. That is literally what a dev branch is. No, the way Git works is you have a you have a system. Then you have the next version of the system, and you have the next version of the system. And when you want a thing, you go to that. You go to the tag. Yeah. Or the commit. The commit. Or the commit. commit. Yeah. Which is yes. based like a tag is just a fancy commit hash. Yeah. So it like, is. All, all it is, is it. get the tag on and of its own mm -hmm. is really just a reference to a shot. It's an easier shot. Commit is right. no longer a verb, it's now a noun. But just, the just, difference yeah, is the it's way both. I'm using it as. Yes. Actually, okay. now that you can do signed commits as well, there's really not all that much difference because True. you can do annotated tags and sign. I also use it as an adjective. What? Commit? Yeah. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> Yeah. What? <laughs> a commit hash is an adjective on yes. hash. Yeah. 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 Oh. That, that's what Git calls it. It's a gerund, though, right? No, it's not a gerund. It's no, a shot one. It's a. Hash. It's a. It's a state. It's, it's a, a noun. It's a, it's a noun. No, it's a noun being used in an adjective. Therefore, it's yes. a gerund. Yeah. Mm. Is that what? Yep. Um, gerund, not gerundive. Yes. Gerundive is now being used as a verb. Okay. Mm. Cool. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know there was a special name for that. Or wait. Who did I? Did it? No, yes. no, no, no. no. A noun being used as an adjective is a... Uh, Define gerund. I thought there were more conditions it's on a gerund than simply a noun. It, oh, it a noun. No, no, gerund no, no, is a verb that functions as a noun. Yeah. So what you're yes. saying is... So well, never mind. Well, technically, yeah. I guess commit is also a verb. It is. <laughs> But in this case, yeah, we're not using the version of commit that is the verb as the adjective. We're using <laughs> the version of commit that is the noun as the so, adjective. So, yeah. if you're confused, this Go is ahead. actually D and D. We're going over grammar. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Congratulations, you're paying attention. We were going. <laughs> yeah. We were going with version control uh, with D and D minis, so it totally counts. That's fair. <laughs> this is actually just using D and D minis. Right. This is actually just an <laughs> intro to the channel that I or the extra videos that I want to do on this channel of like explaining math and physics concepts with D and D. <laughs> this channel so, really is for the Renaissance individual. Yep. That can go into storytelling and literature to um, you know. Uh, uh, the, the, the technical points of language to uh, engineering and science, especially in, in and the only requirement is yeah. that you drink. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Cheers to that. And then you to. I was going to refill you, but I didn't know if you had not reached for the bottle because you didn't want any more or not. No, no, it actually it does. It's good. Good stuff. I will reach for more. So, not. shall we play some D and D? He's, he's trading. Sounds like fake. Hands about to get or fake news. D and D isn't real. No. Speaking of fake news, what I want to do is literally, literally not real. Definition of tabletop fantasy, right? Is that not real? It's not real. Yep. I think that's just the definition of fantasy, though. The tabletop is real. This is a solid thing I can feel. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it's oh, it looks like <laughs> you just rip something off of there. Oh, like, it's high in fiber, <laughs> man. If you want a good fibrous diet, I've been having diarrhea. Video. He's shooting pulp. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, so <laughs> oh, last this time hilarious. on Beyond D and D, we weren't talking about computer science and engineering. Which was a real failure on our part. I'm very sorry, guys. <laughs> so Jasmine was trying to explain to us a difference machine. Imagine a machine Ooh. that can <laughs> that can do some of this stuff for you. <laughs> that sounds cool. It sounds like some weird magic. It sounds like sorcery! Ah! It's, it's not as wizardry. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that's <laughs> much better. Okay. It's the devil! <laughs> God, it would be. It's it's so sad that that's you know the attitude of fifty five percent of the country. Uh, what? Hey, just because that's science the proportion that doesn't attitude. know that the sun is a star does not mean that's the proportion that thinks that science is bad. They just forgot. Okay. Oh, they forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's why flat. For any of our viewers who aren't aware, out. the sun is in fact a star. Yes. And the Earth is round, and we do, in fact, rotate we around, around, it. around the sun. We also revolve around, around it. We rotate around, we around rotate it. We rotate around it. I was. I, I, I were talking about the axis being the sun. You're also rotating around that. I was, oh, having, a I was having a conversation with somebody about the difference between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse, and then they go, "What happens when the sun is in between the moon and the Earth?" <laughs> oh, <God>. Death. <laughs> 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 
Oh god, the super dead. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> we're not lying, we're not lying. You know what's weird? We are like at lower, vo- like, settings on the volume knobs, and yeah. we are redlining a lot. Cause we're well, I'm guessing I'm the here. settings were wrong. It's but, possible, yeah. I, I'll just, I'm, I'm just, here. And even I'm, I'm laughing a lot. Yeah, but even so, like it usually peaks out around where we're averaging. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna Brian, just gonna, how would you feel about a bark call? Is that what the messaging is? <laughs> no. He says uh, next we're gonna say that the sun and the moon aren't the same. But we would not purport such lies on this show. Said this show hurt you. The sun and the moon aren't the same? They are. What? <laughs> yeah. It's turtles all the way down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no <laughs> argue <laughs> I will fight you. And no, no, no. There's a giant snake under the ocean that, like, is eating its tail, mm-hmm. like North Norse mythology. You know? No, that was the big squirrel going up the <coughs> trunk. Oh, right, he'll right, find right, him right. out eventually. <coughs> <coughs> Even were he blind. <coughs> well, and I guess he was trying to avoid. Uh, okay. I got. I coughed time, a piece so of food into my right. nose. I just finished God of War. It was not yeah, so good. Anyway, last time I, on Beyond the Down, and then oh. popped back up. Who's the, where's the manager? Where's my fucking squirrel? <laughs> um, the party <clears throat> was within the cathedral wherein Farkin had uh, gotten his new shiny weapons uh, that he formed into a new shiny weapon singular, um, which was very cool. Oh shit! I wrote down the name of it. Ah uh, yes. I don't know which one I picked. I wrote down two names. <laughs> oh, right, because we were com- combining them, right? Yes. It was Windstorm and Baram, and it was like, is it... It's one of them. Bromstorm? Bromstorm, I yeah, think that was the one we went for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have Bronstorm, Windstorm, and Baram. That's that's what I have down right now. Yeah, Windstorm not... and Baram were the two separate names. Well, so if you combine them, it's Bromstorm. Bromstorm, <laughs> yeah. Baram. <laughs> It sounds, it sounds Wubram. very lax bra for some reason. I don't know why. Lax bra? Wub- Wub- yeah. Wub- like, Wub- 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 sporty, like, jock kind of dude, but oh. grown up, not like okay. high school jock, like college jock. <laughs> Is that better or worse? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's fair? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. So uh, Eisenberg, uncertainty principle of jocks. So, yep. Yeah. They're both better, and, the college ones are both better and worse than the high school ones because they observe them in a, in a uh, I close system. You do, it changes. Yep. Um, <laughs> trying to think of a. Yeah, if you observe the crew too closely, their waveform collapses. Or their waveform, because they go through the waves and that bends. Anyway, oh <clears throat> not a big fan. It's a real stretch. It was, it was uh, yeah, that was a stretch. It's bad. Schrodinger's jock. Um, <laughs> it both is and is not dead. Schrodinger's jock strap. Yeah, that's, is, that's where I went. It both it is and is not smelly. <laughs> yeah, it both is and is not a, infected with staff. <laughs> they, they, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, D&D, I promise we'll play it eventually. <laughs> For like um, 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we'll what get there in three weeks, weeks of game time. time. Four weeks of game time. Three, three, right, right. Three for three. Let's go, let's go. I need my yeah. milestone. Come on, bitches. So, um, <laughs> the group of you had retrieved this weapon, and then emerging, emerging from this cathedral, uh, you saw two insect-like flying vehicles flying towards you in the air. Uh, however, immediately one of them is shot out of the sky, crashes down in front of you, a whole eruption of dust and rubble kick up, blinding you, and you enter combat uh, with the survivors of the crash and the other vehicle. After a long and arduous fight with many failed rolls and a few crits <laughs> from both sides, fewer from yours than from this, um, yeah. you did win. You did not die <coughs> in this fight. Did anybody um, die? Hmm? Did anybody die? No. Okay. Well, you're Except the bad guys. Yeah, the bad guys died. <laughs> they don't count. Yeah. <laughs> Their lives don't matter. Um, you bad defeated these, uh, this pair of very powerful Wraithheart pilots uh, that were flying airships that seemed to be made of shadow demons. Yeah, it's crazy shit. <laughs> what the fuck are you on? All of them. <laughs> To be fair, it's the same thing that happened to be fair. in our vision. Yeah, you had visions predicting this. Yeah. This, is, <laughs> I, this was not me going like, I have no <laughs> man, what if they flew? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
frying head. I'll buy the frying head. It was Norway, it was Norway okay? not Brian. <laughs> Important distinction. So after this fight, which took most of the session, there wasn't a ton of time to get our stuff done, but... And I wonder why. <laughs> These conversations are great. Uh, after that fight, Dennis is on every penitentiary. The gunless left. So. <laughs> it's a quick job. You won't have enough left by the. Or you won't have any left by the end of this introduction. Um, after that fight, Cranmore uh, teamed up with a couple of the Illas, the Myrmidons, and they went out and kind of assessed the situation in the city, uh, the damage that had been done over the over the many years that it was that it was only very lightly inhabited by the Myrmidons and their ilk. That um, sounds like an awesome band name, by the way. I think we should start the, the Myrmidons, Myrmidons and their ilk. No, I was Myrmidons, Cranmore, 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 and the Cranmore and the Illist. <laughs> ah, Cranmore and the Illist. Got it. Excellent. Um, be a local folk band. Yeah. <laughs> a, a folk, folk, a folk, folk rap band? A folk polka. Folka. Oh, folka gosh, band. Ruining it. Anyway. <laughs> it was so cool. <laughs> um, I'm going to need more to drink. Anyway. Uh, so you, you assess the, the situation in the city, and yes, please. And it's not meant to offer, but. <laughs> it ain't as much as anybody else. Evening came and morning followed. Yes, evening came and morning followed, as it normally does. Um, I believe something was talked about overnight, but there wasn't like a like you did some things before falling asleep, and I you forget. were oh yeah, I was praying to my God and yep. some shit, and you were told <laughs> by Cran, by Dennis maybe by Cranmore <laughs> to consecrate the temple. Kind of both. Um, yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. both. Um, so I that consecrate was, you with my seed. That's what? not how that. No, nope. <laughs> wrong, wrong, fuck. Damn it. <laughs> Torn smite. <laughs> Bring it back, man. Bring it back. He can't, he can't just... That's not, that doesn't go both ways. I mean, it could. I thought not without like, a lot of discomfort. Wait, of I don't know. How, how much do we while know while about Azamar physiology? We can do a five-fold <laughs> catechism just to get into another deal of, like, consecration. Yep, we're good. Yep. So I've got I've got a couple that. downstairs if you want to get a quick you know skim of the catechism of the Catholic Church. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm next. guessing no. no. So um, effectively, a little bit of out of out of character stuff first. Um, the way this is going to go is each of you have presented me with a set of tasks that you'd like to do, um, and we're just kind of not necessarily like character by character, but we're going to go through things like week by week. Um, and just kind of resolve the general actions as you are repairing this like main keep in the heart of the city, which I did not actually have time to draw like a big uh, detailed yeah. map of, uh, but I can give a little like quick sketch of it on the table there. Um, not on the table, on the mat. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> That's a beautiful word. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Spent way too long on this for that. Um, but so we'll go through kind of week by week and resolve the actions that you all are doing, you know, whether it's building your grove, fixing up the keep, you know, uh, bringing more people into the town and kind of forming this coalition or investigating the temple for magic or researching spells and finding, you know, the dragon's treasure and that kind of stuff. Um, so let us start with the first week. Uh, as Cranmore mentioned in, in what we were talking about, a lot of this week is going to be about survival and getting like the basics of a defensible uh, section of the city kind of, uh, I shouldn't say quarantined, walled off um, <laughs> to real, uh, kind of walled off and made safe uh, and getting people places to sleep. Uh, an effective supply chain for necessities like food and water and that sort of thing. Um, during this time, I also imagine that folks will want to go back to the dragon's den and kind of collect treasure, see if they can strike a deal with Steal the kobolds the on how that can be divided up, or maybe avoid the kobolds notice entirely. Um, so, yeah, who would like to start? I can pick somebody if we don't have a volunteer, but like for what you want to... We should go in a circle, starting with... Sure, sure. With more close. Uh, I'd like to uh, hunt down a place where I can uh, start my like uh, administration uh, for this okay. uh, Ministry yeah. of Propaganda. 
Um, go ahead and roll an <laughs> investigation check for me uh, with a. I'm not going to give advantage because that still has a chance for not great results. I'll just say you have a plus. 19. Okay, you have a plus 8, so 27, I guess, um, from the Illa's kind of knowing the, the lay of the land. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get a little sketch. Something with a nice study. And we keep documents and, and such. Yeah. Pardon me. Can I get you guys to go to a little bit? Spread them. All right. So effectively, uh, what we have, I'm not going to try and do circles, but imagine things are a little bit more rounded than they are. Uh, kind of goes like this. That's not a circle. I know. He said he wasn't trying to do circles, so and it's okay. I'll tell you what, it's not. It's good. You gotta get one of these. Yeah. <laughs> if only I had somebody to make one for me. <laughs> it was almost like somebody said that they were gonna have all of those done for everybody at the table like six months ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Why don't you get on that? <laughs> <laughs> so like a rock ledge? Uh, it is the shoreline. Ooh. Oh, so, right on the water? Yes. So it abuts the shore. And then about uh, put a shore in your butt. To... Oh baby, <laughs> what the fuck did that even mean? I don't shore up your butt real good. That yeah, sounds like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> tree like forest here and kind of all around about two <laughs> miles like out. Anyway. <laughs> um. <laughs> Within the city, so obviously this is like very zoomed out. Um, it's kind of a large gate uh, which Cranmore came through, and then the keep is kind of uh, hereabouts, and it is kind of up on a on a small hill. Uh, little elevation lines, just uh, Ooh. Um, Ooh. And These so there bad. is a wall around the whole thing. It's somewhat, I wouldn't say dilapidated, but it's not in the best repair. What is this? The keep. Oh, oh. actually they start labeling things. Cool. Um, and there, so I'll fill this in kind of as we discover more of it. Um, so that's a mountain hill something? Like it's a hill. Shoreline. Shoreline. It's, this, yeah, two, this is a shoreline. What's, uh, what's is there like a port over there or is it just like miles, two miles to, oh. to the trees? There are actually a good number of dock wards along this. Two miles to a forest. Um, the Deadwood? The Deadwood is actually further out that way. Okay. Um, so Wait, so is... Came from here? Didn't we go west to east? Or? Yeah, so you all came from this side. So um, north is that way? Yeah, that's... So the Deadwood is actually all around, but it's effectively like there is a forest, and then there's the Deadwood outside of it. The forest does not go all the way around. It goes kind of like two sides. Um... And then the Deadwood kind of encapsulates all of it. The Deadwood is about uh, 20 miles away. So, uh, where was I? 20 miles away. Yes. Um, <laughs> before we got sidetracked with the Deadwood thing. You keep and we're going to update it as we go. Right. And uh, so there are like dock wards here. Uh, there are various sections of the, so I'll kind of draw the general sections and we'll fill things in. The cathedral would be good to put um, in too. Yes. yes, for sure. Because I already saw that. The cathedral is actually... Like, of Malar? Uh, it seems no. to be more like of Torm, uh, but not exactly. But I thought you said there were things of knowledge or something. Yes, which is why it seems Tormic. It's not actually... You mean not Ogmic? Ogmic? Yeah, Ogmic. Sorry, not Tormic. <laughs> um, uh, Malaric. <laughs> Malarkey. <laughs> no, it's malarial. <laughs> malarial. Uh, so this is the. Just, I mean, it's on the water. I mean, you might as well just stay consistent. <laughs> um, so the cathedral is like front and center in the city. Uh, it's like one of the dominant buildings that you see as you enter. Um, but then, like, Only kind of six people can fit in it. No, this is very, like kidding. these are like fifty feet. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> 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 Um, go, go, go. <laughs> right, so like this kind of whole section is docks, um, as is over here. Wait, docks is a river there? This is a lake. 
Oh, or a, a really more like I'll a sea. A bay. Well, this leads into the river, though, doesn't it? No. Oh. Uh, well, yes, but not nearby. But there is a channel, uh, a canal that goes through. Yeah. For like a, a oh, so we trade and stuff like that. There's a channel that can go through for like trade and things like that. Yes. Uh, basically, in the grand scheme of things, like this is on that upper corner of Eglin. And so you have the Tuka channel here, which kind of wraps around uh, the western edge of Erevar and Eglin. Um, so this would be like a few hundred, well, yeah, a few hundred miles that way uh, to the. So that is. I thought you said north was the other way. North is this way. Wait. Oh. That's the west. Um, yeah, so you guys are. That's not the way I come a little bit off of here. Huh? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to look this at it live now. <laughs> weast! That's what I meant. I meant weast. <laughs> no, no, yeah. uh, so you guys are a little bit past this. You guys are about oh, okay. like draw this off and it kind of goes like that kind of thing. That's actually a little bit one of the can- You guys are like here and this is the channel. Okay. So like, Wait, so on the map this is north? Uh uh-uh. uh. On the map, gosh, this okay. this this is okay, north. Now we're back close. Here. This oh. is north. It's yeah, actually it's like a little this. bit tilted. Yeah. That's why the cup is. Aha! Uh-huh. Okay, uh-huh. Uh-huh. okay. Uh-huh. a rose. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you guys are like, are like in, in this area, and then this whole bit is the the Tuka Channel. So like, there's the shrouded isles up here that you guys have not yet been to, um, and then this that we is can't the, get to that you know of. <laughs> yeah, with that attitude. Yeah. So this is the channel. This is the waterway that's right here. You guys are like right on the shoreline. Um, the wall that goes around all of this is about that big. So this is bigger than a fucking channel. It's effectively a sea. The only reason it's called a channel is because it's sort of the inlet between the two land masses <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so like the sea is this way. Uh, okay. The ocean, whatever you want to call it. Um, and Eaglin kind of comes out like this, does this little bay thing. Um, so the wall is about that large, and then there's forest around, like right around it, and then there's the dead wood around that. Okay. Oh. It's like rings. It's like an onion. Got like it's a it's like the rings, man. man. Where, okay. where is, uh, I forget where this, Daryl's from again. Daryl is from all the way over here. So he traveled a long way to get here. Here. Yes. As have you. And that is permanent. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's a mark on a thing that was already marked. I know. <laughs> is it on? What is the name of this thing? Allison. 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 Oh. I feel the same way. <laughs> uh, right now that this is there. Yes. Just to get rid of this. Can you tell? <laughs> COVID. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Now what? Okay. Need paper towels? Yeah, what? we need paper towels. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. There is one. Uh, could you, it's behind the... I don't want the shitty Mexican beer virus, man. I don't have it. You're not going to get it from me. You need to put some lime on it. <laughs> put some lime on it, man. Come on. I don't want that shit to spread. I don't have anything. I miss Jasmine. <laughs> anyway. So we got this uh, more docks over here, um, and kind of like the rest of the area, like largely around this, is like residential, um, and then this is kind of like manufacturing and districts. As you okay. are exploring, um, let me just do like. Mark man. I'm trying to market. Okay. Manufacturing. I'm reading market. upside down. Oh. Everything's fine with your penmanship. Uh, okay. <laughs> Resident. Okay. Alright, so uh, as you are walking around Morthos and trying to find a good place to kind of set up shop, um, you kind of see a few, like, uh, it's kind of tiered in the residential area. So you get this kind of like segmentation within of, like, <laughs> what? Lower, middle, and upper classes. <laughs> Why are you? And near the upper classes, uh, you find several buildings that look like they were once government buildings, um, and could be repurposed again as such. 
Um, so we'll say you get a good, kind of like right on the edge here, uh, there's a large building that we can call what you have found for the administrative building. Yeah. The town hall, as it were. But <laughs> the abbreviation for residential is just to chop off the last three letters. <laughs> you wrote most of the words. <laughs> and then it just made me think that like that whole place is just where Joe lives. That's, you know, it's, that's where the resident is. His name is Joe. Like, in his <laughs> At res, but like I was like, ah, that doesn't like get the whole idea across. So I just kept writing until I, I was like, oh, this is it's just totally too much. just me. I can't, I can't even abbreviate it. Now. Um, I like also how I made our other single resident like that was somehow an abbreviation. <laughs> but anyway, um, don't worry too much about that. <laughs> Joe is very large, and he lies down. It's this way. Yes. Good point. <laughs> It's with his ass on the cathedral. <laughs> um. All right. I so. Have a pointy top and everything. Right. So. So it is Morthos' so, turn. Somebody yes. says, what are you doing? "Is he a traitor?" Uh, well, one, I want to like. <laughs> oh, is no. the whole city completely empty? That's awesome. The the person <laughs> who works or who said that works out of oh, Trader really? Joe's, and the other group has had many uh, kind of. You know, like Danish soldiers defecting to their side to go and like fight for them oh, as their army. Nice. So they're all traitor Joes. Very, oh. nice. Very nice. That's funny. Um, all right, so you find a, a building for a residential or for uh, administrative That's spirits. They're haunted. Now we need to find people to work with. Right. So I'll use that same investigation check. Um. As you're kind of exploring the city with a couple of the illas, uh, a couple of things to note, actually. First of all is the architecture of the city. Um, with a roll that high, it's a little bit weird. As you're going around, most of the damage to the buildings seems to be on the bottom. On the bottom? Yes. Not like you would typically expect it to be on the top. And yeah, there's weathering on the top of them. Like flooding like damage? Around. No, it actually looks like structural damage from something being hit. Um, and as you kind of look a bit closer, only about half of the buildings have foundations. And that half is the half that seems less damaged on the bottom. Um, have have foundations like... Like have foundations in the earth. In the earth, okay. So those ones aren't damaged. Correct. Yeah, those so, ones seem to be weathered as you would expect. So just not well put So something no, came well through prepared. here. I'm not there, never mind. <laughs> <It's>, I mean, <laughs> so, no, since this, there's a scale to this of like a week, I assume you're all sharing the information that you're finding out. Okay. Right? So there can be back and forth conversation. Depends on what okay. find. Uh, True, yeah. Like, yeah. you're like, and I'm keeping that to myself. But... <laughs> well, then, yeah. How about that's the exception? <laughs> yeah, probably. So. Um, it seems like something came through underground, maybe, or something? Or like an earthquake? Or, a per yeah, an earthquake could be. Um? Everybody make an insight check. Everybody, wow. Well, I mean, you're probably sharing this information, yeah, so... We are. Everyone would have the, have the chance to go and look at it and try and figure 24. it out. 24. 21. Uh, 6 plus 16, not very many numbers. Okay. Farkin and Norwin, despite this being a very alien concept to you, as you're looking at it and you're really like peering through it, and you've been in a good number of well structured buildings, and you know, as you probably went and tried to preach the word of Ogla to others, probably some less well structured buildings, there is no real explanation for a building to be constructed like this until. It kind of dawns on both of you that maybe they weren't on the ground. Wait, what do you mean they weren't on the ground? The like the buildings were not on the ground ever until something brought them down. Like floating? Yep. That seems to be the only explanation you guys can come up with. As you were looking <laughs> at this, it doesn't make any sense any other way. Like, there's just uh, nothing underneath of the building to anchor it, and that is absurd. No one would ever build a building that way. Uh, oh, okay. Even, even like, 
Uh, how long was the scouring ago? 327 years? Even, yeah. Even that long ago? Yeah, because what you got from, like, is even with the scouring, there were still buildings left either partially standing or depending on how far from the Okay. You got uh, maybe even fully standing. So there was enough to base some initial architecture off of. And so even okay. like the very beginning Interesting. would have had, you know, buildings with foundations unless they were for nomadic peoples. Huh. That's very odd indeed. So at least partially a floating city is what this Perhaps is. Perhaps it was powered by a god, and when the gods got cut off from this world, it fell? Seems as likely as the next explanation. Maybe they came from another plane. Mm. Um, but so you pick one of the buildings with a foundation to I base your the next question <laughs> to base your administration in, uh, yeah, yeah. as it seems to require less work to kind of fix up. Yep. Not that the others are by any means irreparable, but they'll take a bit more time. Okay. Uh, what's the uh... As far as people, uh, let's say you, as you're talking with the Illas and exploring the city, um, Corilla kind of strikes out as probably the most likely to head up a kind of administration and be sort of a, a mayor sort of figure. Sure, sure. Um, among, like, there's just the Illas and there's only about 20 or so of them. So as far as like employees, there isn't much to speak of yet. But. Well, we need we need to bring more people into the city. Right. Uh, oh, there's no there's other survivors. This should Just be some me. kind of municipal government anyway that can grow with the city. Wait, well, wait, wait, then who was manning the? My uh, my idea was crossbow. We need to. We need to. Oh, they were. Yes, there were. Um, it was at the end of last session that we discussed this. There was about another dozen or so myrmidons. Oh, in the okay. I didn't realize that yep. there were people other than okay. Yeah, I so knew that there were other people in the city. I didn't realize there were also Myrmidons. They are also Myrmidons. Uh, all told, there's about 24 of them. 23. Okay. Rick, Delilah. Uh, well, we need is a, a, an initiative to get different people moving into the city. Mm -hmm. uh, one uh, for farming and marketplace, and also to bring people into the city to be sort of like our distribution of information between other cities. So what's your goal here? Oh, oh, sorry. Whoa, you okay? Yeah. Yeah. My goal. Uh, uh, my goal here is to uh, Daryl, who is yeah, now two one of mile our border that you uh, can allies, farm is now living in a city where the uh, where it's not as well what? understood that there is armies that are going to be coming up against them. So, trying to <laughs> elevate the perspective of people who are living out in those areas uh, to <laughs> understand that there's going to be. Uh, it, there needs to be an organizing of people to go against that. Army. So, right. has okay. so we really Azu and the is, Cobalt here. They could, by word of mouth, spread your message. Is Aragorn yeah, really going to come that's true. But, near here? What we need is to get more people like to come in, and then I want to be able to get more people <coughs> to come in so that we can send them out with information uh, uh, to kind of like develop that uprising. So hoping to come. Become more like William Wallace or a warlord. Or <laughs> yes. Spy. Or <laughs> Ministry like, of you're Propaganda. Like you're like a pseudo. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're like a pseudo multi-class. That's what it kind of feels like. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. cool. I like awesome. it. I was just curious if that was yeah. on purpose or not. On the, uh, on the topic of farmland, though, there's actually, in these two-mile kind of radius before the woods, there's actually a lot of farmland. Um, like a, a pretty significant amount. Um, some of it is, you know, a little has life lain fallow for quite a while, um, but a good bit of it is, you know, still usable, and the rest would be usable within a season. Um, so there's certainly enough for a farmer to get started with several farmers. We can uh, we can decree free land to the first so many people to come to the city. Yeah. And dotted amongst that farmland so are. For the Native <laughs> If the native Myrmidons are the municipal government and they're on board, it should be okay. Yeah. Until you give them blankets. Oof. Oof. So they're from the dark. same place as us. <laughs> Dotting that farm <coughs> landscape is, are more towers similar to the ones that you all uh, really fought the dragon in. Yep. 
Uh, they're like maybe every like half Except mile or so. Maybe less basic. less fallen over. Yeah, <laughs> they're actually all still in pretty good condition. Okay. As are the gates around the city. The wall is a little bit fallen over, um, but then there are a few buildings within the city that are of that similar like gleaming whitish stone that are in very good shape. So. Like, when we noticed those, you know, like every half mile or so, like the, the, the towers in various states, yep. did we notice, did there seem to be any kind of, like, remains of a wall between them? Like, maybe that was a, a greater wall around this? Like, this was a little more of a... Yes, actually, you did. Kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. this was once much bigger, it's maybe more like the inner gate. Mm -hmm. Some of them did seem to have, like, structure, like rubble, broken down structures near them that looked like they might have formed sections of a wall. Others looked like they might have been like intermediary. Okay. Um, so some of them might have been just watch towers, but others did seem to form part of like an exterior. Maybe wall. like an exterior. Okay. Right. And they pretty much encapsulate like almost to the edge of the forest, and they hold a lot of that farmland. Okay. In time, the city will grow again, but for now, we'll focus on the inner <coughs> Well, I. My, it seems to usually inner cities are where more of the richer, more prosperous, more powerful people live. So it might help to go on the same kind of line where we were seeing with those buildings. Like you know, if there were things like floating buildings or fancier things like that, they would be in the central part. Well, supposedly the whole thing was right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So if there, this would if the, there's even the walls. No, uh, not every building is floating. Yeah. Oh, the ones the just the ones without foundation. Right. So we're. Oh, okay, it's, it's, that makes way more it's sense. About half and half. Okay. Where my head is is that there's a there's like a bigger kind of you know, watchtower spread out like that could be the actual kingdom range and this could have been like an inner kingdom and then just over time the city is shrunk back to where everything is here but there might be ruins of like this was actually the proletariat section of the city. Okay. Yeah. It's a very good idea. Is there a Different distribution of which buildings here. seem to have, like, which areas seem to have more floating? Yeah. Um, <coughs> I'll get to that in a second. It seemed like there was another... Well, you'd say farms. I, are they occupied farms, like work farms? Okay, so they're... Okay. They've all lain fallow for quite some time. Some of them are, like... Fallow. I've never heard that That one. We need to start yeah. trade routes. <laughs> Damn city slicker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was raised on two acres. Once every three years, you have to go uh, Yep. So it's a it's a way to not overwork the soil. Oh, um, yeah, okay. It's, it's I, effectively, the field is not being used. It's not being grown in. Um, right. So you have to have a field lay fallow every couple of years. Um, more or less than three, depending on the climate. I've heard of that. That is a good rule of thumb. Um, but, like, if something is laying fallow for a while, it's basically abandoned. Um, yes, so there are there are kind of uh, places where you note that there are more, I'm not necessarily going to draw out, but there's like sec sections of the manufacturing and market um, that have more of like these elevated buildings. Um, a lot of like your basic crafts are not like that. Um, like a lot of like wood woodworking uh, shops and like mills and things like that are normal like to the ground buildings. Um, but then up here, there seem to be more like fancy kinds of shops that are elevated. Do we see, do we see any evidence of like stairs nope. or anything? No. Nope. Or like a portal, like a, maybe like a, a ring. Uh, roll an investigation check. <sighs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the archaeology, oh. the, you know, the archaeology attempt is admirable, but... Maybe right now we should deal with, deal with the here and now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's some things that it makes sense to just, like, look at as you're exploring the new city. But yes, like, certainly we shouldn't take up too much time with this. Um, and it does appear that, like, the upper, like, the more upper class section of the residential area of Joe is, uh, <laughs> has a little bit more common uh, occurrence of those floating buildings. Okay. Um, the keep does not look like it floated. Okay. Does the keep look newer than the buildings in the residential area? If anything, it looks older. Are we still going around with what our characters are trying to do? Yes. Um, so, 
<laughs> I think we're probably about a, a, at a point where until other people act, your stuff is at a hold. Yes. So I wanted, yeah. The the because you guys are going to work together to kind of get folks into yeah. the city. You use the cold balls to go back to Daryl's area to try to uh, right talk about that. Talk about uh, giving people land. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. All right. Uh, Just keep running around. Yeah. Far right. Up. Is Jasmine with me for this trip? Uh, is, are you going back to the Dragon's Den? Yeah. Then yes. All right. Um, when we were there last time, there didn't seem to be like a whole lot of of kobolds there. Nope. Um, no. Are time. we walking in with a we're walking in with the general idea of where this thing is, oh, God, right? It's at the. It's, in, it's at most the, likely in the bottom where that crystal cavern was. All right. Um. I am going to greater invisibility. Okay. Us, so we can sneak in. Alrighty. Ooh. So that, yeah, it eliminates sight and sound, right? So like, and yeah, all right, cool. I'll say no problem. Um, it does take you a little while to find the horde um, because it's not, in, like, it's not out in the open. It's like, uh, you kind of have to navigate through almost a maze-like structure in the crystal cavern, but you know, you manage just by keeping track of, of landmarks and things like that and some clever use of uh, optics, like literally how the light shines on the, exactly. on the yeah, parts of the crystal, uh, to keep your path. And after going down a few different, like, sort of branches, uh, you come across a, a rather unassuming looking kind of portion of a wall, but there is, in front of that portion, like a, a broken down, like, basically dead, if it could have ever been considered alive, construct. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems to have lost whatever was powering it. And upon thinking, well, why the fuck is there something here? You look at the wall a bit more and discover it's false. Okay. Um, finding the mechanism and going inside, you do find the dragon's hoard. Um, and I actually I wrote out... We show all of it. You find the dragon's hoard! It's just a bunch of stamps. The real treasure with a stamp on my back. Stamp collection. <laughs> we don't know what stamps are. Those things might be valuable. That's true. <laughs> they have these weird symbols on them. Yeah, they're, they're like look, really intricate, like very tiny drawings. drawings. Like that's yeah, impressive that's art. Really like, awesome art. <laughs> I think I sell for a lot. And they're sticky. No, oh, don't. That's all right, the horde contains <laughs> eight thousand five hundred gold. All right. Jesus, probably write stuff down. Yes, six hundred and fifty platinum, eleven gems worth five hundred gold each. They are one fire opal, one black opal, one red green tourmaline. Does what kind of gem they are matter? Yes. For, well, probably not for you. Do you want to just, could you just send me the list? Yep. Later? Okay. Um, yeah, they would matter for Jasna, but since Jasna's going to be leaving us, yeah. yeah, good point. Um, a potion of diminution, diminution um, a potion of superior healing, a periapt of health, and one functional soul stone, which Jasna is going to... Snatch. Yeah. I'm, not even, I'm not even gonna try. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck that thing is. <laughs> <laughs> so, have it. Does it whisper? Which other one? <laughs> it does not whisper, no. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's misplaced the DM's guide. Perry up to health. Um, it does something that I'll figure out while we're help. moving other things forward. Yeah, that works All too. Right. Um, so, that is the Dragon's Horde. All right. So stuff it all in the bag of holding. Oh, literally all of it yep. in the bag of holding. It's really interested um, in health supplements. <laughs> it's, it seems that way. You're yeah. immune to contracting any disease while you wear this pendant. There we go. If okay. you are already infected with a disease, the effects are suppressed while you wear the pendant. Are you on Goop's web website? <laughs> COVID. Oh my god, that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> it smells funny. <laughs> Carry up to pelts. Copyright. Pendant. Wow. Or <laughs> huh? Did you say pendant or potion? Carry out. 
It's a pendant. Oh, a necklace. Sorry, I thought he said uh, you were listing off potions, and I was early trying to write them. He said he yeah. said potion of health, potion of separate. Yeah, times. it was a superior yeah. healing potion and, and a potion of diminution. Diminution. Okay. okay. Po- potion of smallness. Because you're not yeah. small enough. <laughs> <laughs> you, can get, you can be size tiny. Um. Um. Yeah. Why the fuck not? Um. I'm gonna hop in the bag, you douse that, and that's how we're gonna get out of here, because I'm gonna spell slots. <laughs> Alright, um, yeah. <laughs> she does it, and you'll make it out just fine. Um, as you all return, Jez actually addresses the group and says, Hey, I have this soul stone, I have this, like, calling from the Luminaire Academy. I think it's really best if we part ways for a while and I go and investigate this with them. And we totally agreed that I was gonna I was gonna hold on to the uh to the bag of holding now. Yeah, no, I think I mean I can make a new one and just I actually already have made a new one and I'll put See, the stuff from it that's awesome. mine in there. You guys can keep the bag of holding. Um Is everything in it? Yes. Wait, is, Minus a couple thousand gold. Is is he keeping it? I will love it. That's up to you guys. Bye! <laughs> Chaz the fucks off. <laughs> Not so fast. I, Wait, I, 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 I grab... If, if he's holding onto it, I grab my stuff out of it. Okay, you want some stuff? Go ahead. <laughs> I grab all my stuff. Okay. All the How much scales stuff yours is and stuff. There? You're gonna be weighed down a little bit. Hey, was a little weird. You okay? I generally will say we yeah. ignore encumbrance, but if you're trying to hold like half a bag of holding, it's <laughs> a bit different. No, it's just like it's uh, the got, bowl, dude. All you I really have know, like twenty five dragon scales. Yeah, the dragon scales are actually <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's really all that I was grabbing out. <laughs> <laughs> you can carry like four. Yeah, those are those are actually kind of the hard part. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> they're like. Okay, yeah, they're, they're big and they're Never mind big. then. I, I did want to pull my tooth out of there and uh, clean it off. Sure. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Good choice. Yeah. Nice. I almost you forgot clean about your that. teeth. Uh, my dragon tooth. <laughs> By however much he has imbibed of piss, I so much lighter <laughs> shattens to have my teeth clean. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else for now, Farkin? Um, I'm wearing the pendant. I have no idea what the hell it does, but I'm wearing it. It's oh, shiny. you should do your uh, your week of spell research. Did you have things marked down for that already? Mm, I don't know. For storm you... sphere? Did I have? No, no, we haven't done any rolling yet. I okay, just, I just told you the one time I might have, we haven't really done anything. Okay, well I'll say you've probably gotten. How long ago was that? Only a couple of weeks, I think. In in real time or in? Game? Oh no, it was only. It's only been like. I think it was. Two of my sessions ago, so three sessions ago is what we talked about. So a week. So go ahead and get a roll before this happens. Um, yeah, one d twenty and add your uh, spellcasting modifier. Ooh, that's that's not good. Um, but my spellcasting modifier brings it up a little bit. Actually, I thought the it was it's a DC thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm at a nine. I think that fails. Uh, it will. But what's your what store what spell level is Storm Sphere? Uh, four. And you're you have up to fourth level spell slots. Okay, yeah. So that does fail. Um, go ahead and uh, what is it? DC is fifteen plus the spell level. So yeah, you fail by five or more. Roll a uh, D four for me. Oops, four. Okay, uh, your next spell casting check has disadvantage. And yes. you have one failure point. So I will I will mark these down um, on a different book. Just the next one? Yeah, just the next one. Includes cantrips or just level one and higher? Um for sorry, for crafting a spell. Oh, oh okay. sorry, okay. Um and one failure point. And so now actually at the end of this first week of the work that we're doing now, go ahead and roll again. This one will With be a disadvantage. disadvantage. All right, cool. Same old. Oof. <sighs> just can't figure it out. You gotta come to a real spellcaster. I got a twelve and a two. Yeah, I'm. I'm a. I don't know what spells are. They just. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. Like that's <laughs> yeah. Thing. All right. Um, and do so. Mark off. Um, 
180 gold for the materials that you need to uh, work with this. And roll again on that D4. Uh, yeah, he's D4. only got like 12,000 left. <laughs> roll out of the D4. <laughs> Three. Three. I assume that Okay. Um, Three. Okay. It's going to be rough. Uh, but the end of this week actually brings you to completion of the spell. Really? Yes. <laughs> so it's a level four, so you only needed two weeks, mm-hmm. and those were these two weeks. Um, yeah. Okay. So you make one final spell casting check, and you subtract the number of failure points. So you subtract three from your roll. Whoa! That's a net 20. Total is? Uh, 77. Oh. All right, 24 is well... Oh, no, 27, yeah, sorry, yeah, you did. Yeah, so 24 is well over the DC needed, so you actually managed to complete the spell without introducing a flaw to it. Yay. So despite your drawbacks, you finish Storm Sphere, and it is completely functional. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty much wild magic. Yeah, right two, there, like 2, two, two uh, 20. 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Admit you're disappointed that there's not a flaw. <laughs> because it is kind of fun. Yeah, ah. Shingo needs to be able to cast a spell, and then something wonky happens. I'll figure out. <laughs> that was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Renmore. Anything else? Every time you cast it, you roll one d four. There actually, if, if it's a one, <laughs> roll on the table. Yeah. So there's like unreliable is there's like a ten percent chance for the spell to just fail. There's like a bunch of flaws that do yeah, stuff like that. that. It's actually pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Cranmore. So first thing, uh, Jasna. Yeah. So, so since Aquileia, you've been talking about the Luminaire Academy, and Kenzo were surprised to, that you're going, and it makes sense. So I'm gonna. Yeah, my player decided that she didn't want to play anymore. <laughs> Actually, so for you all, Emma <laughs> might only be out for like two or three weeks before she comes in. She said she had a new character idea, so oh, it might be a long hiatus. Nice. Yeah. So it's going is to it gonna be her assistant. <laughs> 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 So we'll do the, the, the heartfelt goodbye and and move on to the next thing. Okay, because she's not here to role play her part anyway. Yeah, um, it's a heartfelt goodbye. She's it's a heartfelt goodbye. Her. I'll even give her a little carving <laughs> to remember us. <laughs> oh. um, no. <laughs> uh, then the so um, I credit more views with Morthos on some of the priorities. So as I wrote my little thing that uh, security first. So. Yep. Uh, there are two things that that Kramer will be volunteering to help with on rotations. Um, that will include uh, repairs on the keep and other structures as prioritized by the Myrmidons, mm-hmm. and scouting missions in the surrounding areas to check for any possible threats, any resources that we may leverage. Yes. Um, yeah. Things like things like that for the. Good idea. Yeah. So scouting missions that will be directed by again Mervidon's or another area will be held to volunteering to help out with that. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. in off time, he will be uh, trying to identify, could be identifying a grove, and I went through a whole thing about what the ideal grove is next. I, I said within within the walls, but it sounds like that might not be the case. So if it's not just outside the walls, it could be here time too, as long as it's within the realm. There's nothing allocated here. Um, so he'll be setting up. The grove. Okay, so That's first it. off, um, repairing the keep will cost 5,000 gold. That is the cost to cover, you know, going back to Aquilea, getting the supplies, making sure they can get back here easily enough. All of this will be rolled into kind of how you all are getting more folks into the city. Um, are you willing to spend that? So I have the, party, the, the party can cover that. Okay, okay. let's do it. Yeah. Just in the stuff party items that I have. That's what, yeah. Was, yep, that's what I was going to say. Too. You're the treasury guy. All right. Um, Depending that, on how much of the rest of the city you want to repair now, it can be anywhere from zero to uh, fifteen thousand gold more. We have uh, if effectively nine thousand gold. Fifteen thousand gold. Yeah, we have 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 fifteen thousand g
<laughs> so if Rashido wants to pipe up and say, I could cover a little bit of this, that's cool. If not, also cool. So just letting you like, here's thank you. Yeah. I I want to well we we found some gold in addition to we got some of these cool gems too. I I don't know how they're what basically each five thousand dollars or five thousand gold worth of gems. Yeah, so. hopefully we don't ruin the local economy. Okay. If we only trade with Ecolea, that, that could be a problem. So we have like ten ish grand to work with. Okay. I'm estimating. Okay. So effectively, I'm saying 5,000 for the keep, 5,000 for the outer wall, and then 5,000 to repair the um, the buildings inside. And you can mix and match. You can do like, or well, we really okay. want to focus on like the sections of the wall that are closest to the keep, and then do half of the buildings. So and then it can do, you know, that'll be We should start 5, with the keep and the walls, and as yes. people come in, yes. they can make contributions themselves with like yeah. a tax. Yeah. Yeah. They're getting free land, they can, they can trip, chip into. Yeah, Taxes like, aren't free land. They're get, well, they're getting free land plus they can just they, they develop their housing yeah. infrastructure. They, they'll be taking up some responsibility for developing what. Right, well, right. They, so they, we have, they, we have people that are going to be on the docks. I mean, starting... that's that's fine. It's, I'm just wondering like what you guys are prioritizing. Yeah. So, people can put the effort to start their own ten, marketplace ten. areas and things like that. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. because they want to be able to sell. So, so they are going to be doing that. Let me let me actually add up how much. Right. Their progress will be have. slower than if you guys were injecting money in order to make it go, so but then, it'll happen. That's also yeah. automated. It's <laughs> 11 huh? gems, uh, but this one's automated. Gold each. Yes, yeah. So, 5,500? Yeah. It's the, free, it's the visible hand of the market now. Plus. <laughs> I love the free land, <laughs> but only if you help us contribute and tie the... Ah! <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, they have to... We give you a place, but you have to, you know... If you want a house, there's a house How much on the land, but you're going to either knock it down, build your own, or fix what's, what's steel there beach. kind of thing. Right. You want to start oh, a business on the docks, and you're going to have to probably more. fix Fox some of the right person right. to start that business. Uh, but like, if you want we have to, that is how much party gold we have. 12,396. Okay. Boys. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> plus the 5,000 that you contributed. That's including that. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's including the 5,500 from the gems. Well, so we somebody wants to contribute 104 of their own gold. We need 12,500. And uh, I'm willing to contribute a couple hundred of my own gold. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. All right, so we'll say you can guys get up to 1,500 or uh, 15,000 and get all of it. Cool. Okay. I also want to be part of helping oh, settlers. Also, settle. like. Mm, Oh wait, sorry. Four thousand, four thousand of it. How much was it that you guys had? Two, twelve thousand three hundred ninety-six. Yeah. Sorry, I meant get up to twelve, uh, twelve five hundred, so that you can get like one, one, and then half of the other. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. Um, some of these are lines of credit. Does yeah. that matter? Um, they're lines of credit from Allerton, I believe. Uh. Okay. Oh, we can call those in. They're still in Dane, so. Yeah, Aikolay is still in Dane, so it's pretty likely. Uh, hmm, let me actually see here. Um, Are you trying to sell bonds? <laughs> I do have some to sell. Sentiment on the we market is... We can sell bonds. Yeah, like, this is interesting. Oh uh, yeah, I have 2200 <laughs> in line of credit to Eurohall and 1666 yeah. in Allerton. So do I. Well, yeah. Shoot, I still have that credit because I can't give that away to people as you know, charitable anything. It's a piece of paper. Uh, so this is I'll just throw it in the pot. pot as is. There we go. What else am I going to do with this thing? It's actually not a bad idea to sell bonds as part of the property. Mm-hmm. Um, you can sell at 85% of the stated value. All right, so okay, so I have the same that you have for the let's... credit line. So. Confidence in in Allerton with its location to the capital is a little bit lower just because of the wartime, but okay. So it's uh, six, you said it's eighty five percent of what of total. Yep. Okay. Plus. Uh, uh, We're doing economics. Eight five times two two one two. I want to be talking about get again. <laughs> Plus. All right, so we'll save the state of the city, and then we'll start doing our repairs. If they don't look good, we can revert back to there. Exactly. <laughs> so we actually have eleven thousand eight hundred fourteen 
dollars and fifteen cents. Okay, so if people are willing to contribute the remaining seven hundred, we can so get, I got uh, four and a half. Fourteen hundred, fourteen hundred sixteen to go on top of that. My line of credit. Fourteen. Plus mine, double fourteen. It. So oh, double 14. that. So twenty-eight thirty-two plus twenty. That's at sixteen seventy-six. Now it's in credit. Yep. Is damn near fifteen thousand. We'll we'll waive the other four hundred. So oh, yeah. you guys can get all three of the things done. <laughs> okay. Yay! So is there any way we can convince you as part of this to instead of free land being like shareholds? Shareholds? What do you mean? Oh, the, like like the homesteading or something? Like yeah. we're trading bonds for, for land. It's like a big HOA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> HOA? This is gonna become a city builder simulator, isn't it? <laughs> you set it up this way! <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not free land. Uh, you have, you know, there's this, you nothing's ever free. Yeah. Well, um, it's, yeah, and it might be cash, but it's part of the crops that you grow or whatever, right? There's a couple other things I want to uh, mention. Uh, we should also uh, get some. Is it related to what we're doing right now? Uh, not right now, just other things I wanted to do. All right, then we'll hit that on week two. Yep. I'm done. Okay. Done? Norwin, what you doing? Uh, number one, I'm checking out this cathedral. Yes. All right. So go ahead and roll a religion check for me. I was really hoping with that flourish that it would be in that one. Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> uh, 21. <laughs> Real estate. <laughs> we got that in the chat. It's what? free real estate. <laughs> Quotes. Yep. <laughs> what was your total, Brian? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. Seems too big to fail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, you are relatively certain that this is not a temple to Agla. Um, you don't see any iconog iconography that would, you know, identify it as such. However, it does seem to be dedicated to um, not a single god. It actually seems to, to have, like, scenes from a couple of different gods, some of them in, like, smaller chapels on, like, little side avenues in the cathedral. Um, but all of them do seem to be related in some way to the concept of knowledge and learning and the spread of knowledge. Um, it's actually, it's somewhat interesting because nothing else that you've seen as you've been exploring the city seems to reflect that virtue. Um, this seems to be like the only, there's not like a standalone library even that you've seen. How how old does this, does this appear to be older than the scouring? This yeah, building? yeah, the whole does this appear city to be this, is. But it doesn't um, appear to be the same age as the rest of the buildings roughly? A little bit newer. It's hard to tell exactly how much, but like there's a little bit less wear on. Okay. Does it have a foundation? Yes. Now, with these different um, these different gods, does it? I mean, th does it look like it was originally one, and then a couple hundred years or sometime later they put another one on, and then sometime later, or was it? Did it seem like all there were probably three of them or four, or whatever, were being? It was probably in groups, is what it okay. looks like, just <laughs> surveying the different chapels. Like some of them seem to have like older artwork or inscriptions that were kind of okay. like blanked over or like reworked stone um, to change them. But like, it seems like there were maybe three or four to begin with. Okay. And then the other, there's probably a total of about eight or nine. So it's not um, just like something that's been whitewashed and repurposed over time. It's something that this was actually shared. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, uh, I'll actually, it's not even two fingers. Yeah, it's the one thing. I was going to ask, like, is something going on? What do you I mean? missed something last week. What do you mean? Like, we're, you're generally like half a bottle of Glen Livid in by now. Oh, I've just tra been tracking more closely. Yeah, I've been, I've been trying to be more accurate with my tracking. Well, it's, yeah. it's less about you. It's, it's, yeah. it was, that was just because you were holding the bottle at that time. Usually <laughs> the whole table is drinking. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Dennis yeah. has also been like, oh, I shouldn't. He's, uh, he and I are doing a lot of cardio at the gym. So it's like, <laughs> oh, it's been really making me think about like the calories that I've been taking. Yeah. And so now he's got that bottle of water and he's trying to modulate when he's drinking and when he's drinking water. Water. That's why you drink liquor. Right. Exactly. It's actually the highest calories per ounce, but you drink fewer ounces to get drunk. <laughs> right. 
Um, let's see here. Channel. <laughs> See, I was expecting your first week to be going back to this tail. <laughs> well, there was there was one thing that I was. Gonna He's going to twist assume. some tail. He's going to twist some tail. I was going to people that he. I was you know, going to lure us into the city. Yeah. I was going to write, write a letter to Yana. <laughs> Look at you, yeah. Kaya. Nice. But we don't have like a postal service yet. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> That's you know another four hundred gold. We're good. <laughs> Just pay Daryl to do it. <laughs> I think he's going back to the same spot. <coughs> three uh, as you're as you're kind of surveying these other chapels, three names actually do stick out to you as being possible names of the deities. Um, they appear to probably be more like minor or locally worshipped deities, but still important enough to have their own kind of chapels. Uh, they are Sophiel, S-O-P-H-Y-L, Athor, A-T-H-O-R, and Frothlink. O-R. O-R. And Frothlink. Uh, F-R-O-T-H-L-E-Y-K. Frothlink. Which very clearly like, speaks of a different language group to you as you're reading it. Yeah. Um, it seems to be, and it even stands out from like the others in the temple, like the names that you see, they might not be of gods, but like of followers and high priests and stuff. Very few of them have those kinds of roots. A piece of wood. Ah. I was going to ask wow. you about coronavirus. That seems like pretty risky. You can get some splinters in your dick. <laughs> But so you find these, you know, you're looking around and you see these chapels. All of them seem to purport some, you know, or to uh, purvey some power uh, to their priests and such. You know, like anybody could be a, a cleric of one of these gods. Um, as long as they were dedicated to the same principles as you are. Um, they do all seem to kind of reflect that same domain, uh, that domain of knowledge. So does it seem like if I were to pray like at any one of these uh, little sections, like it would have the same boost effect to my prayers or something? It might be lessened because it's not specifically your god, but okay. it does seem like it would still... like. Torm wouldn't be mad about it. Uh, but you mean Ogma? Ogma, goddammit. <laughs> keep doing that. Ogma wouldn't be mad I about it. I forget who Torm is. Torm is uh, justice and defense of the weak and honor and, and valor. Courage, honor, and sacrifice is what yep. I have written down. <laughs> yep. The other group deals with him a lot. So it, like, oh. it's in my mind a lot. And then I keep getting them mixed up when I get into guys. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, Ogma would not be mad. Okay. Um, um, do however, I get... there is no particular chapel to Ogma here. Uh, do I get any sense of, like, uh, the, the, like, any languages that I recognize or anything? Like, not, not that I can necessarily read, but that I can recognize that it is this specific language? Uh, some of it, like, a decent bit of it does seem to be in common, actually. Like, especially oh, okay. as you're, like, going through and um, reading, like, the bits, like, below tapestries, like, descriptions or stuff. Um, wait. No. Sorry. Not those. Just kidding. There is some stuff in common, but not there. Um, those would all have been wiped out from the scouring, and that was me just blanking for a moment. Um, <laughs> as you as you look more, like a lot of that stuff seems to be in the language that you've seen. That is, I don't know if you guys have learned the name of it yet. I asked more of those to take Altera? a look. Yeah, no. so you could definitely read it. <laughs> okay, um, I'll read it. So as Morthos comes into the cathedral, um, and they seem to be like general, and like as you're looking around the chapels, they seem to be general, like inscriptions of what you know. Like if you if you go into a, a Catholic church and you might see like you know the name of like you know Jesus bearing the cross, like yeah, the name of the station, right, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's basically that kind of stuff, like a, a short description of the uh, 
the mythological event that was going on in the in the tapestry or the relief or the carving or what have you. Um, those seem to be pretty common in the chapels. There are certain like prayer guides that you can find, um, like etched into stone but uh, below an altar or something like that. What about books? So as you continue to traverse the, the cathedral, and you discover the lower levels. Uh, while there is no freestanding library in the city, there is a library below the cathedral. Most of the books seem to have been wiped clean. Most of them seem to be pre-scouring. Um, however, there is a small section, maybe two bookshelves, of books that seem to have been placed there recently. And you talk to the Myrmidons and... Um, it actually seems to be them who've placed most of them, and uh, they kind of, they, they say it this way very, like, nonchalantly, but it probably catches you a bit off guard. And they say, oh yeah, we put a, a good number of those there, and so, you know, our visitors might come and bring a book or two to place there, too. You, you, you have visitors? You come here often? Uh, every, uh, every couple of years we get a round of them. How else do you think we've, uh, well, we're not all 327 years old. I just assumed you bred amongst yourselves. We're all women. Oh, I, I would have noticed you that. Would have known and that. I would not have said that. Go <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> along with them breeding amongst themselves. Right. <laughs> yes, um, successful at it. we typically find a few willing folk from... Icolea or visitors up the river and take them back here and well, once we're done with them, they move on. They typically have lives to get back to shipping trades, you know, merchant businesses, things like that, but they stay with us for a little while. The books before the scouring, have you any idea what they were on? Alas, no. Or even the titles blank? Yep. They're basically just completely blanked out, leather bound uh, tomes. Okay, I take all the books from the before the scouring that are blank and I put them separately in like a different. They file. kind of already are separate. Oh, okay. Like the, the bookshelves that line the, the walls of this library, like most of them are with empty books. Um, okay. And then this is like a big room with a ladder that kind of like rolls across the. Uh, yep. The yeah, it's shelf. it's like very much like it's an underground version of like that classic library. Awesome. Um, <laughs> there's like you know torch sconces between every few bookshelves, uh, which does not have like it's not oil cloth that you see on the sconces. They don't seem to be real fire um, that they would have been lit with something else. <coughs> um, but you see, you know, light sources. I have most I have likely. some books from before the scouring, and I think some of them did not get erased or something. That's true. Um, the book I'm translating is from before the scouring. Yep. Actually, roll an investigation check for me. Boom! Your books are erased. Seven plus numbers. You can assist him or roll your own. Plus five. Was investigation? Yep. He's already got more. Plus than five. Nineteen. Okay. Um, as you two are kind of perusing the shelves, Morthos actually finds three books that are not wiped clean. That are before scouring? Mm -hmm. We can tell that? Mm -hmm. It's a recognizable language. Because they're written in Alteran, that language that you can read because of your warlock ability, but it's not a language anyone knows. The one that, uh, the book that I'm translating right now? Yep. Alright, cool. Um, there's three, three of those books you say? Yes. Alright. Take those back into my possession <laughs> and, um, and translate them. Once I'm done with this yeah. book, and each yeah. of them, so they they were all found together. They almost seem to be a trilogy, at least at first glance. Um, and they seem to be well, how very George Lucas of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not three trilogies. It's one successively worse than the last. It's just one. <laughs> um, so, uh, they were actually, they weren't found, like, on one of the bookshelves. They were actually found in one of the, sort of, side studies, um, in a trap door underneath of a desk. Oh. Which, with your 19 investigation, you found as you were searching. Oh, so they were, like, is there some, they seem like, to magical be like a, about the desk? No. Is nothing particularly. Alteran shipping? Which one? 
<laughs> it's hidden. It's kind of sutra. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this was we'll hidden. Find out. Oh, we'll man. find out. This is explicit. <laughs> it was in with a couple of other books and scrolls uh, that were wiped clean. Maybe like a like a special collections kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and then I guess the only other thing I would be looking for is like signs of magic. Which you find many. <laughs> Did not expect that. I mean, the place is, it's glowing with divine magic. Um, there are several, like, consecrated objects that are, they're basically just channels for divine power. But there's several of them in, like, each of the chapels. Probably a total of, like, 30. Um, oh. They they basically like your arcane focus or your uh, divine focus. Like they're not like a oh, super special. I see. But they're okay. like they're like uh, okay. Yeah. A, um, a channel to the god. Yep. And um, in addition, though, you actually find uh, a couple of books on spellcraft. Uh, and I will give you the titles of a few of those. Um, actually, I'll just say you find the same ones that Kayana got from that one library. So I'll give you the list of 12. 12 of them? I find 12 of them? Yep. Uh, Actually, I'll send it to you, but uh, so you don't have to write all this down. But you get Spellcraft, a treatise by Edward J. Wormtooth. Uh, Shaping Magic by Riddle and the Wise. Volatile Spellcasting by Aquila Thunder Reaper. Ritual Casting and Thunder in New Spells by Ulrich von Spiel. Uh, Channeling Magic with Objects by U.S. Stone Cleaver. Sights of Bizarre Magnificence by Aravira Sage Sex? Stride. Sex of Bizarre? Sights. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, it could also be Sects, but it, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Innovations in Spell Research by Jason Silverbolt. Silverbolt. Uh, Ancient Enchantments and What We Learn from Them, Author Unknown. Elemental Dangers of Famous Ruins, also by Eddard J. Wormtooth. Uh, Interrelations Among Magical Disciplines by Yenai Feldrake, Magic Since the Scouring and Analysis by Horace Firescribe, and A Treatise on the Nature of the Magic of Ley Lines by Ewald Gloom. Wow! Treasure trove! <laughs> I spend the rest of my two weeks reading those. <laughs> okay. Unless, unless I Something hear, happens unless I hear somebody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. No! <laughs> um, I will say, um, if you'd like to do any spell research, now is also a good time. However, reading these might help you do that. So yeah. Oh shit, Rob. Not that it mattered for this one because your rolls were first two were low enough, the last one was fuck. high enough. Yeah. Uh, but do you have proficiency in Arcana? Nope. Okay. I like I said, magic just happened to me. Right. I don't generally. I didn't. I didn't anything. think so. But if you had, it actually gives you a, a bonus to the oh, uh, spellcraft really? checks. Okay. Right. Yep. All right. Um. So that's probably good for week one. Week two. Morthos, what you up to? Uh, one. I want to. Uh, now that I got uh, some things into place, I want to do. Uh, spend some time during the week to do some translation of the one book. Okay. I want to <laughs> write a. Uh, I, I want to send a message out to Yana to give her my progress and uh, let her know of uh, our keep and and that I have found some more books in the in same touch. language. Uh, some like keeping it like uh, about <laughs> mellow. yeah, keeping it mellow, keeping, keeping it, it about you like know, chill, uh, casual, and you know. keeping it about academia rather than like uh, banging politics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, theater and shit. But chill. also, you know. <laughs> but also that. Yes. But also that I miss her and that she should come see me. I did not know what Netflix and chill meant at one point. Until and you asked your dad. Until, uh, I, until, I, until <laughs> I asked one of my friends, I was like, I don't know, you want to just Netflix and chill? <laughs> he was like, what? No, dude. Did you really ask your friend for that? Hey, That's right? amazing. <laughs> What? <laughs> Dennis and I Netflix and chill all the time, right? <laughs> or is that not what that means? <laughs> oh. Just bang out a bunch of Netflix and chill. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Um, 
So, Mr. <laughs> so you had already discovered some things from that book, right? Like the, um, or you had already read it and are just now translating it. Yeah? Correct. Okay. I have a summary. And it was an account of the uh, the warlord. Yeah. Um, Whatever the part someone of the, the second. Is. Uh, Alden Someone the second, the second yes. Algen the second, I think was what his name was. Um, the one who figured out interplanar travel, making it much easier, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, planes one. That's why I wanted to go to uh, the uh, Academy right. to learn about planes the planes Oh, yeah. we know about planes now? There's the Alexander uh, the you Great have a, you of planes You do have a big notion of them because of uh, Azeroth. Yeah, she... Oh, right, 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 okay. He oh, went conquering uh, through, pl through multiple okay. planes. That's, the, that's at least what the story's about. Yep. Okay. So it, it, it like not something I'd ever have you shared that with us? Uh, I, uh, I think you did. I think I did. Yeah. Okay. We we know. Yeah. All the second of the Ulvari Empire <laughs> and his conquest through the plains. Um, bro, is it good at Netflix and chill with your bro? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> not if you see no who. <laughs> No homo, we're out for now. We expect a shipment on Monday. <laughs> Can you check in the bag? <laughs> I really want some homo. <laughs> I need my homo, man. <laughs> um, Alright, so yeah. Um, so that, so message to Yana. Trans Sorry, there was, a, there was a COVID-19 um, scare and everybody bought out the homo. <laughs> <laughs> they panic bought the homo. <laughs> and now they're reselling the homo at 400% markup. <laughs> They have to capitalize, man. <laughs> the market will regulate itself eventually. Um, so, anything else you wanted to do for the week? Um, Are you going to help cram more with getting more people in the... Yep. Cool. Yeah, because I... Um, We're helping each other with it. I think this is a right, yeah. mutual it's, goal. Since yeah. he didn't bring it up for this particular week, I'm saying he's helping you. But of course, overall, you are definitely like, working together on it. Right. Gosh. Yeah, I, I want to be able to develop like communication routes for for other cities. And it sounds like that. you kind of have more of an eye towards like community building, and you have an eye towards and yeah, externally to, building our yeah, communication. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also had the idea of sending, but the, the cold vaults and other books already going out to send the message via them also. Yeah, but that's not quite as proactive as what. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I kind of want to recruit people to be able to build this even more. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, especially to be able going to send on. messages between us and the strong yeah. world. The, uh, the repairs, as exactly. you guys are getting more people coming in, uh, the repairs are continuing to accelerate. Uh, they're growing at a pretty good pace already, and I imagine that like when you guys have free time, you're also helping out with that and directing them as, as yeah. you see fit. Um, Versus working on our respective stronghold sections. Yes, so right. by the way, the groove, you have a couple of options. Yeah. Um, you can, it would be outside of the main wall, but you could try and find, um, there would be several spots for a grove within the forest that surrounds the keep, um, and that is certainly viable. You could get, you know, I'd say there's probably like 10 or so spots that would be suitable. Um, you could also actually take, there is kind of an in-city park uh, in this region. Um, Ooh, called it. So this is like, I don't know, you call it like a nature reserve. Um, I should read what I net what I sent to you. Not res. Or if you don't mind reading it, and then you can decide what, what the answer is. Okay. It's only one paragraph. I was going to say, you have to read the whole thing? It had to be an entire paper. <laughs> it, it is only an entire one, research paper. It's it is only one statement. It is only one treatise on Lilith Fair 2010. <laughs> it is only one statement with 68 parts. <laughs> The party of the first part, section B, and the second part of the first part, section A. It's not in legalese, it's only one inspired. Uh, is it at least like double spaced? Like no. you get that long or no. It's one paragraph. It does it one paragraph is like four to eight sentences. Eight sentences? It's a pretty brief. Huh? That's a paragraph. Yeah, it's a paragraph. It depends on the style of writing. You're yeah, about. in academic writing, it's not big at all. Yeah, in novels, it's huge. Uh, uh, yeah, you don't have all day. In literature, it's nothing. <laughs> literature says, "What's a paragraph?" <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
I tried to use some variability in length of. Anyway. <laughs> I really, I, did, I just banged out in like five minutes. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. quick. Yeah, I was just like, you know. There isn't even anything I have that that short. I took 30 seconds. Like, what? come there isn't on. Anything five minutes. That short. <laughs> you trailers. <laughs> trailers, yeah. Some of those trailers are long, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then he took the splinters out. Nice. <sighs> took longer to get the splinters out than to bang it out. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, this wasn't worth it. Well, I thought you were going to read it out. Oh, did you want me to? Uh, yeah, I was supposed to. Uh, it's okay. You don't have to. <laughs> no, that's, that's fine. That's that's fine. Fine. It's kind of lame, so if you just want to tell us what, what it is, that's fine. No, 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 it's, it's good. Uh, Fiddle plays, pays Cranmore a visit to request his company on a routine scouting expedition in the area around Lila. She knows to find him this morning in what people now simply call the Grove. Fenella considers that she does not get to visit the Grove as often as she would like. It is quiet, but not absent of sound. She can hear the brook running past and the waterfall calls from further within. As she enters, she sees that there is now a garden that a few people help maintain. Nearby, Cranmore has built a small structure that serves as a library where anyone can come and read or write. Effort was clearly made to cater to people of smaller stature than Cranmore himself, including low shelves and comfortable seating. The smell of flowers, books, and earth are all refreshing. Fenilla continues and passes through an area that might loosely be described as a practice arena. Several improbably large tree trunks and ropes set up like practice dummies of some kind. Fenella has never seen anything like it, and her imagination reels in the attempt to picture a moose centaur practicing, practicing an elegant yet powerful martial art. She finally arrives at the waterfall and finds Cranmore sitting by the water and rhythmically working on one of his wood carvings. Fenella recalled some anxiety about the scouting expedition. All right, is but this she can't cannot... figure. You can. This could be <laughs> no. But she cannot seem to find that anxiety. Now. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, and then, right in front of the and then Matt and came in. in. It was really, really steamy outside. I had to pick a character that was within like the story. And then the God said, "I am Matt beyond me." Vanilla <laughs> <laughs> uh, recalled some anxiety about the scouting expedition, but she cannot she seem to find that anxiety now. now. Instead, she feels excitement for another outing into the wild. Cranmore looks up to see Fenella, and a wide smile grows across his face, wow. always a warm welcome. As they make their way out of the grove, a frosty wind snaps at Fenella's cheek and nose. She thinks now about how all the things that rage, including the weather, seem evened out in the grove. She's glad to have taken some of that peace with her as they set out for the day. And that is our description so of So it Cranmore. seems like so it's going to be over there somewhere yeah. in the woods. I would imagine it's in the woods. So a stream and waterfall are a part of it. Yeah, a stream and waterfall are going to fit in like yeah. a few hundred feet. But I imagine if there's a <laughs> not without a water <laughs> running to the <laughs> channel, you know, that yeah. would make yeah. sense. There's actually probably a similar site to what you're describing, relatively close up, but like... Oh, more than <laughs> yeah, when I... For Jesse like uh, inside of Jesse's <laughs> 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 Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, we're going inside of Jesse now, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me suit up. <laughs> Please do. <Yeah. laughs> oh, you don't want to catch my viruses? <laughs> nope. You don't want the corona? <laughs> um, it sounds so festive, but... <laughs> I'll take the crown. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you, you find a spot for your grove, probably off to the... The west, the west of the city. Um, it's yes, west, west or east. It's westerly. Yep. <laughs> Men of the west. <laughs> Make sure you grow your yeast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that will be where you begin construction on your grove. Um, Farkin, what are you doing this week? So uh, more of a. Uh, Kind of an encumbrance raw question. How much of uh, 85, approximately, you know, just guess it, 8,500 gold and 650 platinum can I carry on my person? <laughs> I believe it was every hundred coins is a pound, and you're encumbered at half your weight. So. 
42 and a half okay. times 100, so 42,000, no, 4,250. 4, okay. And you'd have to drop all of your other gear and just yes. carry gold. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I ignore coin weight, so just go for it. Yeah, so the, the part of this is for a reason. Okay. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna take all the platinum from the hoard and about three thousand gold and keep it on me. So okay. that leaves about fifty five hundred gold. Um, I am going to look for a hollowed out tree in the cockatoo preserve. Okay. I'm going to uh, wrap up that fifty five hundred gold as a little cash. Um, and I'm going to <laughs> levitate up into the trunk of the tree and stash uh, about 5,500 gold <laughs> in the cooker tube preserve. <laughs> Wait, why is there a cooker tube preserve? It's, it's on the map. Someone's got to look out for them. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, it is. <laughs> it's canon. It's the only thing. <laughs> um, what is it actually? Sanctioned say? by the city of Lila. Nothing. I didn't say anything. He wrote it on there, and then I swear it. And he <laughs> start by it. Okay. So it's canon now. There's a forest near some. Like this was way before. Like I was just like. It actually forest. lines up with the description that Kramer had for what's going on over in his. A little bit. Yeah. 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 I didn't want you to accidentally tear down my <laughs> hidey hole. <laughs> they wouldn't tear like, anything. That's down. true. Actually, now I think about it. Um, true. But all right. So yeah, you can absolutely do that. It takes less than a day. Awesome. Yeah. So. And then while I'm over here, you know, I'm going to be wandering around. I'll spend some time over in Cranworth Grove talking with him. And then um, just generally kind of um, meeting people. Um, there's not really very many people here to meet. Um, sure, but as more and more merchants come, I imagine you'll want to kind of get in with them, do a little sure. bit of your uh, Nothing charlatan. Nothing really right now, but yeah. Do a little yeah. bit of your sleight of hand. Not a ton of meat of hand, <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm less worried about sleight of handing at this point in time. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, you just stashed by 5,500 gold. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Zuntai. We're all looking kind of weird. Bless you? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> kind of pinkish. Am I? Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. A sneeze is a very, you know, heavy... Especially <laughs> mine. <laughs> mine are really forceful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't, go like, I, don't sneeze, I don't sneeze out of my nose, so mine are really loud. Mm. I did, I did yes. know someone that could sneeze <laughs> yeah. so loud it would like echo throughout the room. It's like, are you yelling right now? Ow. I, <laughs> I actually, like, when I sneeze like that, that is actually me holding back a bit. Uh, wow. <laughs> I did a girl that sneezed 15 times in a row. Wow. You know, to keep a, a mean That's appearance. That's a lot. Obviously. I think the world record is a woman that didn't have more than like a, a five minute pause in sneezing for like over a year. Wow. How do you survive that? I don't even know. I th I don't think she was able to get a full night's sleep either. That's awful. Yeah. That's it's not a way to have. If yep. she, so she sneezed in her sleep or she just didn't get more than five minutes of sleep at a time. Something like that. I'm honestly, I'm not sure of the details. That's if insane. it was the latter, she'd There's probably no, be dead. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way you could survive on five minutes of sleep at a time for a year. No. What you sleep the sleep? Like after 14 hours of sleep, they say it's like what a BAC of 0.8. Yeah, something crazy. Every hour after a certain. Um, so yeah, like unless there's any, you know, like big boisterous merchants or anything, it's really just kind of the meet and greets. Oh. Oh yeah. There's totally one. Uh, his name is... Uh, That's his name. He's a Kenku. Meetin. Ah, ah. He's a Kenku and his name is a sound effect. Is... Okay. We can What's play a this out now, <laughs> or we can let the other guys go, because I am totally going to just make noises at you okay. <laughs> for, like, as long as you want to. Let's do that, like, right before the break, and okay, then, we'll just make sure. which there will be a, I think we'll do a quick intermission after the two of you go. <laughs> I thought he already went. I went. Yeah. No, no, a second True, time. yeah. Yeah, the, he, time? the grove. Yeah, um, oh, because I would the scouting and the building. And I the would like to resolve a little bit more with what you guys are doing with going to Aqualea and gathering folks. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. Can I get some persuasion checks from the two of you? Okay. Oh dear. Uh, 
got ten. You can have advantage because you're having a whole week to do this. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ten. <laughs> Ouch. You can also have advantage, Jesse. Thirteen. Fourteen. Total? Total. Alright. <laughs> um, We're tired. Yeah, like, you have a bit of a rapport with the folks of Aquileia, though, because of, you know, saving them from Mordecai. And <laughs> um, there is that. So, like, there's already... Sorry, I look like hell. We're fresh off the road. We've been very busy. But there's a great opportunity happening over there right now. Take it away, Martha. Free Tell land! That there are awesome opportunities. There are awesome, like, folk tales about our harrowing battle against those bears and everything where we charge at them. Do you like dead blue dragons? Do you like hot Mermidonna? <laughs> Do you Mermidonna, like Mermidonna action? Hot Mermidonna action! <laughs> Do you yeah. like steamy forest porn scenes? <laughs> oh boy. Do you oh like boy. dead wood Do in a forest? Do <laughs> you like cocktail preserves? <laughs> um, so you all actually do, like, you don't get a huge following, but as you're going back and forth between Aquileia and Lila, um, you do get several, like, merchants and tradesfolk kind of coming uh, back with you. Most of the people who don't, like, immediately up proffer themselves up are, like, just a little bit worried about the Deadwood still. Like, there's still that just mental block of, like, I don't want to go through this place that is so associated with curses and death in my mind. Um, but a good number of folks, maybe, like, 50 or 60 people, will kind of come with you over this week and begin to start... You know, farming the land to begin populating some of the houses and helping more and more with the repairs and such. It is coincidentally a very good time for you to start being in the farmers. We happen to be coming in on late winter, early spring, where they, they can just start doing <laughs> right. the land. Exactly. Total land, brand new. Uh, yeah, like uh, just in time. Six so it would have been lame. Nobody else would have So it's not part of the same mm. structure, but if you want to do your grove, it will be an extra. Um, just in time compilation. Oh, uh, what were we saying? Uh, the rule isn't that it's just a thirty percent yeah, show; it's like a ten percent extra. Yeah, so it's separate. So I wouldn't make that happen. Um, where are you, charts? Why can't I find you? Why have you gone right, away? Look that. Look that helps. Where are you, charts? Down there, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, the stronghold will be back. Please come and help it's me. In my hands. Ah, yeah. Cleric, Druid, Grove, is... So is the Druid Glover, Grover is the, the, the monk's monastery, which is <laughs> like a grove. It's kind of a combination this is a hybrid of the two. Thing. I think both of them are the... are temples, right? Mm. In the... What's our cutoff time tonight? Probably around 9.45 or 10, comes tomorrow. if that's okay. okay. Yep. Just asking. Since we got started, I work five feet from my bed now, so. Yeah. <laughs> that hurt. It looks really bad. Brand Brand name, by the, the radiator. I work right next to you to sleep. Yeah. I actually have to go down to my house. Okay. Actually, Nate ended up using his spare room. Like, he actually moved his whole setup back into the spare room, so he, there was actually a door that he could close. Just a second. Trip. No. I don't think Who, uh, exactly what. moved on from the place Calibrate and uh, is doing remote work for uh, well, this company. insurance company in Columbus, so oh. he just had it right next to you know, his gaming PC, right next to where his wife's computer is, right? The computer room, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, then just discovered kind of later on last year that it was in a static, like he felt it, like it was that not able to like cut over and off, like it's there, so you almost feel like this constant movement mm -hmm. flowing back and forth. Yep. So he moved all the, all the work desk That's and good. work computer stuff back into his spare room. Okay. Yeah, it, the physical separation is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I've been managing so far, like I have my current work from home set up with like my laptop and my one monitor and there for work and then I have my lap my monitor that's connected to my regular desktop and I've been pretty good about fighting the urge so far but I can feel the urge and so I'm like maybe I need to move, I'm not sure yet. 
Like when I did normal work from home days, I went downstairs in the library, but I can't set up like a monitor there, so I don't know yet. Anyway, so yeah, I don't. You, why do people do that? I don't like just using my laptop, man. Be mobile. Go to the library. Do something. I can't. They're closed. The library's closed too. Mm -hmm. I actually was going to do that, like many days, just bring my laptop yeah, to the library. Right. It's so it's not that I can't just work on my laptop. It's that if I have a monitor right there, it's yeah. like, well, I should use this. Yeah. Um, so what's the thing for the grove? So I, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm pretty sure it's a temple. So right. they are eight thousand gold to build them. Really? It costs one eight for a grove. Yep. How? It, how? <laughs> it cost less to be Who is getting this money for what? Longer to build it. That does not make sense to me. Yeah, because they're, they're, you're not really like materials. Like there aren't materials that you need for the most part. Yeah, the whole part of the point of this monastic thing without a building. Although he did say there was kind of a building in the library, so I mean, that I mean, yeah, because he can find some stuff and put something. Eight thousand gold for a for a what, what's it called? Um, Bookshelf. No, a, the free library, a little free library. <laughs> I mean, That's I a fine a library. Free libraries, but I mean, when I think this of free library, nice I think of you know hand jobs in the south. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? what? Wait, yeah, what? <laughs> Whoa. Um, what? <laughs> what? So. Also, I gave all my gold away to the party. Right. <laughs> so we can we can hold off on the uh, costs of it for now. Um, I worked it off and like just dishwasher <laughs> and just say it happens um, <laughs> because I want to read this a little bit more. But okay. it might just be like that's the game mechanic. Like you can't get something for nothing. And yeah. since this grove offers some pretty powerful benefits, it doesn't make sense for it to just can, happen. Yeah, I can imagine like time. Yeah, time I mean, there's also it. time, but time and money are somewhat equivalent. I, I guess. Well, it's kind of like it, maybe. Part of the compromise is a little There's less a formula money, between maybe them. a little bit longer. So like a, yeah, right. Maybe or maybe like a priority list on what. You maybe want. that money is going to more minor like druid or monk types that are helping you cultivate the gardens and make things like work and look the way. So you want them what to. you're saying is, uh, indentured servants. No, he's paying them a damn good wage. I don't think I'm paying them well. <laughs> really well. Well, I thought that's what he was uh, saying. 8,000 8, gold. Really pay much, because you're just going to have druids do it for you. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying that's why it would cost Yeah, money. this is where I take out a municipal bond against the government of Lila, and then I get tax money back worth more than the investment on the... All right. On the bond. Hold on a second, Cranmore. So it's this, just you are not too big to fail. <laughs> <laughs> it's just money moving around now. <laughs> Yeah, so it's yeah, it's kind of a like landscaping and like especially because the drew the grove is magical. Like there is there's more than just you imbuing this place with magic. Oh yeah, and there's folks who are just, probably keeping it up while you're away. Gold does not imbue the land. <laughs> no, but it pays the people who need to eat. No, but perhaps yeah, to do it for you. I see. Although most of them could probably cast good barriers. Perhaps That's not be Perhaps if you punch a bunch of the. Ground and the trees. And... I'm trying. Apparently, <laughs> um, it's not working. I've been punching and kicking for two weeks now. <laughs> I don't know if you ever like punched mud, but it doesn't usually be like flat. Are you a level nine monk? I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of totally it's called a tamper, and I have done that. True. But do you have a tamper? Uh, uh, Cranmore does not have a tamper. All right. Um, this has a tamper. Mm -hmm. Has a tamper. So let's go with. <laughs> for now, we will allow you to like defray the cost, um, but you could still begin construction. Basically, pulling some money from like the other stuff that's going on and doing like a little bit of side work. Screw your walls! We're <laughs> <laughs> having a civil war. Don't yeah. divert wall money to your grove. <laughs> oh my god! We're not. I'm not <laughs> saying <laughs> this is a logistically <laughs> literal. Oh thing. my god! No, we need a this wall. We need the wall. We need the wall. We need the wall. We need the wall. Walls work, guys. <laughs> Back in medieval times, they work well. They did. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, there are people on stuff, them so. and you're paying to watch them. Right. Because yeah. yeah. they work really well right now, too, as long as somebody's watching them and not right. just, you know, rolling up with some chain link fence. 
uh, Kayana or Super David Tassi, to answer your question about why we keep coming around to servitude with this group, I feel like at this point it's kind of the joke for the group. It's like, well, I guess we're just gonna hire some. Where are the orphans? Or we're just gonna get some slave orphans to do it. It's we're gonna have to find a new thing with that jazz because we can't do like slave orphans without jazz. Yeah, we'll find material. Yeah. Anyway, uh, is there anything else you want to do during no, the week? No, just I'm gonna turn some tricks. A lot of nothing. Okay, so <laughs> well, maybe while you're there, you managed to find like a gold mine. I did say I was scout like scouting for resources. True. Maybe maybe it's what, sitting we'll, on top we'll, of okay. So mine. there we go. There we go. We'll say that the initial parts of the the money you need to construct this are coming from the resources you're finding in the woods and the the particular trees that you find that are very well suited to felling for lumber for re- reconstruction efforts. Whoa, cool. You're strip mining your grove? No. No, from f- other parts. These, it's a big forest. Those trees over there. <laughs> the dead but wood. these trees. The dead wood. It's already dead. <laughs> dead wood is really hard to cut down, remember. Yeah, it's, just, it's like petrified. I love how all it's of this is like stone. It's it usable, but it's very hard to work with. Yeah. And there's only a couple of artisans who do so. One of whom you actually get to come with you. Because they oh, would that generally guy, be. Uh, also, uh, that guy, yeah. I can shape stone. It's not actually it's stone, not stone. It's Oh, just like, that's why he said light stone. So I'm these two sure band-aids on my thumbs, thumbs was because I was trying to <laughs> chisel red oak, which is very hard wood. Yeah. And uh, just one slip of the, the chisel yeah. and my hand banged the lumber. Yeah. Uh, at least it didn't wow. go into the chisel. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't hit the chisel, so. Um, yeah, at least you banged the wood. So, so yeah, petri- so not quite petrified, but hardwoods are <sighs> called hardwood for a reason. Yeah. Um, all right, so good for you. Yep. Norman, what you doing this week? Reading. Cool. Uh, so Reading. <laughs> you have plenty of time for these, and you're also a higher level than Kiana was when she found them. So I'm going to say you have advantage on these, but go ahead and uh, give me some investigation checks, one for each day that you're spending reading. That's so if you're spending the whole week, seven. And you don't have to spend like the whole day. That's on a, it. a seven with advantage. Oh, with advantage. So, yep. Okay. Thirteen plus four. So then eighteen for the first day. All right. Thanks. Uh, take that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Ah, you can take really good. <laughs> Very uh, good. Eleven. <laughs> eleven for day two. Uh, eighteen. Day three. Uh, 23, day four. What? Okay. I feel like this wasn't how we did it. I also, I do have proficiency in Arcana. That you said that matters. I don't know. This guy's not helping us build anything. Not for this. We've got to okay. keep in walls and end the structures. He does not need to spend 12 hours a day reading. He can help with other things. Well. These are just primary <laughs> tasks. <laughs> We're crossing yeah. over the secondary. I think they know that. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 23 for day 5. Okay. Uh, 22 for day 6. So could you go to take a day for Ogma? I'm praying it's, to him at night. It's, it's the, the Lord's, Lord's day. day. It's the Lord's day. <laughs> That's not a thing in this room. <laughs> <laughs> there are feast and festival days. 18 for day 7. Okay. <laughs> uh. Alrighty. Thanks. Um. Does anybody get my... Brian, Brian. I did say that I was going to do some translating this week, too. We'll, True. Have to, we'll have to come up with uh, how many hours to get done. Oh, All right. Um, I mean, how many hours? I said 36 total? Yeah, 36 total. I have 34 left. I mean, if you're translating for a large part of the week, you could probably finish it. I'd say you're probably, so you're probably like riding your horses between... Aquileia and Lila. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a rad my horse. You guys do have horses, right? Yeah. We had yeah. them. I don't know if we brought them with us we all the way. I'm pretty sure you did. At one point. Okay. We huh? haven't been carrying for horses this whole time. We haven't That's been carrying for them. They're probably half dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've no. <laughs> Pass those logistics off onto the horses. <laughs> <laughs> do. Jess has done a very good job to for her flying. <laughs> Oh my gosh! She, 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 she so takes with her. Riding the horses oh, back and forth your reading done, then we'll just say you can get the, the bulk of your, your reading done. Okay. Your translating done. So we'll say it's finished. 
by the end of week two. We'll say I've been sneaking, like sneaking food to your horses and making sure they're okay. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense for something you would do. Yeah, yeah I would not believe Tr- Cranmore would just, like, let some horses die. Yeah. <laughs> we had to leave them because they wouldn't fit on the boat. Uh, they wouldn't fit on the boat. On the last time we were going down the river. We oh, right. Didn't didn't the boat. True. Oh, yeah. wasn't that a thing? We had to leave them because they wouldn't fit on the boat. That makes sense. So we, we don't have them. We only have the flying mule. Uh, oh, the God. first time you guys go we to Aquila, you, you get some horses. horses. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> yes. For I another 5,000 gold, <laughs> <laughs> Is it gonna be the punchy bag in the grove? Or horse? <laughs> well, he's a horse himself. Yeah. Yeah. But is he gonna let you ride him? He's not I, a horse. I, he's I a moose. I'd rather you be on horse just so you can move at the same speed. It would drive me nuts to have to move at bike. Right. Like so you, you get uh, several pieces of information about spellcrafting in general. Um, you're not quite gone through all 12 of the books yet, but uh, you do actually discover a feat. What? I discover a feat? Yeah. Like, as, like... as you're reading through one of these tomes, nice. specifically Volatile Spellcasting by Aquila Thunder Reaper, um, you gain the insight to cast your spells recklessly. Uh, once per day, you could do something vaguely akin to wild magic, although on a much smaller scale. Um, That's adorable. I'm before infected. rolling, before rolling the attack, uh, you roll a d6 and apply the following. Uh, you don't have to write all this down. I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, you roll a d6 and apply the result on the following table to your spell. You can either gain disadvantage on the attack or roll d- impose disadvantage on the save. Uh, double the range but have the damage. Uh, double damage but half damage to you, but it can't bring you below one HP. Um, Du- double the duration of the spell. If it's instantaneous, it gets recast for free at the start of your next turn. So, like, if you cast Firebolt and you rolled a three on your or a four on your reckless cast, you just for free cast Firebolt again at the start of your next turn. <laughs> um, I think you can't cast Firebolt. Right. Bolt, but he also can't spe- can. cast that. <laughs> um, but uh, he can cast his. So pedantic. You can <laughs> cast his... your spell spectacularly. <laughs> And it's um, you get a very impressive visual flair that accompanies the spell, Ooh, and you get advantage like on persuasion one. and intimidation for one minute. Um, you and the target are both subject to the polymorph spell on a six, and you turn into a sheep on a failed save. Copycat. Wait forever, or just <laughs> for the duration of polymorph, which is one hour. <laughs> right, right, right. Which is how long? One hour. <laughs> so I and like if it's is it, I have have an option <laughs> to apply. It. You, you have the option if to I, roll, if I roll, but once you roll, it's done. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's, <laughs> it's a feat. It's not, you know, perfect. It has some drawbacks, but it's generally more powerful than just casting a spell. Okay. Ooh, free so it has wool. a little drawback. What? So, ooh, free wool. <laughs> well, that's a double damage yeah. thing, but that sheep sounds awesome. Yeah, there you go. Do that. I should turn into a um, sheep. You make and you also sheep. discover other insights Wait, about spellcraft. If I turn into a sheep... I can infiltrate Beep. places. <laughs> can I fail the save on purpose? <laughs> uh, I think you can, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah! <laughs> He's but touching a cold and cast- wool for clothing. But you're Turn casting a spell. So you. You're using up a once-a-day resource in doing this reckless cast. Yeah. And you're banking on rolling a six. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. If you're willing to wait outside of a place for, like, two weeks while you're like, reckless cast, <laughs> not a sheep. Next day, uh, this cast. Well, it starts to no, she- <laughs> I just can't just choose my number off the table. <laughs> it starts to know some yeah. potential option though. Like we're outside of a gate, and like, okay, if you turn into a sheep, that's plan A. But if not, <laughs> well, we'll go with plan B. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna take a quick intermission, uh, five to ten minutes, no more, and we'll be right back. <laughs>
Week two. All right, and we're back. That was week two. Oh boy. Uh, moving on to week three. I think week three will go faster. Yes. And we're just about done. So. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> week three. Same what but people more. Like to continue to do or start anew. Morthos, anything you have in mind? Uh, well, I want to send that. I uh, one, I want to. Of the 60 people, I want to find somebody that I can trust to be kind of like the right-hand man. Sure. Uh, to uh, help me out with my uh, uh, administration. Go duties. ahead and uh, roll insight with a plus five bonus because you have a weak one to... to... Uh, 12. 12 total? Uh, no. Yep. Uh, 12 plus the five, or I'm sorry, seven plus the five. But do I get my insight bonus yep. normally too? Okay, which is another one, so 13. 13? Okay. Yeah, yeah um, as you're kind of, <laughs> you know, milling about and getting to know the people that are, are joining the city, um, you find a, a rather, a trustworthy seeming half-elf um, who has introduced himself to you as a... Uh, you know what? It was the first name that popped in my head, so it's going to be it. Bjorn. Bjorn. Bjorn? Bjorn. Bjorn. Like Bjorn. Bjorn. It's a but very elfish name. Bjorn, right? Yeah. Jurgen. Jurgen. Half elf. Jurgen. Okay, that's fair. The human half named him. Um, Bjorn, like B J O R N. Oh, what about? Doing. So Bjorn, but Bjorn. 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 Does he wear a Bjorn? <laughs> Does he wear a sword? <laughs> yes. He also has a baby Bjorn on his back. Huh? Like I got a nat 20. You did? <laughs> what a waste of a roll. <laughs> um, yeah, so you, you find Bjorn, who seems to be a, a trustworthy second in command. Um, is this for underneath of Corella or as like a. Uh, well, I need somebody you? that I can trust to go back and forth between the cities to help. Uh, 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 yeah, he seems like a, a a very competent courier. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Postmaster Bjorn. And we can yeah. always encode our I also, messages if we don't trust him enough. Um, right. That is one thing I was talking, thinking about. Is like, do I need to develop like a key or something like that to uh, decode uh, messages and things like that? Coming probably back not moment. yet. Not yet. But if you yeah. go for an establishment, we could definitely talk about that. Sure. Uh, so, uh, I, one, I'd like to send him to, uh, that city that I met Yana in, uh, Aquileia. Aquileia. With a uh, message saying how much you love her? Uh, with my letter that I wrote, <laughs> uh, <laughs> since we didn't have, like, a mail system set up. How much uh, you want her tail again? Along with the copy of the book that I translated for them. Yeah. Um, oh. Uh, and a, uh, uh. Uh, message about the other three books that I found as well that I haven't translated yet. Wait, okay. you translated a book for that for Yana? Yeah. Are you going to what it said? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. I, I did not. Oh, you did. Uh huh. What, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already said it. It was all about a planeswalker warlord. That was like the only oh, time right, right. of planeswalkers going from plane to plane, destroying. Oh, that was uh, the book. And conquering. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Before Very scour. romantic. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I, I remember that because we were making fun of tail touching. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You're, tell, <laughs> you're telling her how much you want to touch your tail. Again. Everyone's all fixed on these other things. It's like the book about planes walking and a warlord. <laughs> <laughs> Seems kind of important. Right. Just a bit. I mean, that, that could be some important planes. Critical there. war. It's fine, <laughs> Brian. Have you heard of date? Do we know about planes? <laughs> <laughs> um. um. Anything else? Uh, and I want him to uh, see if uh, there's anybody there that would be good for coming up with like a uh, like a press for flyers, like creating a, like a like a printing press type yeah, invention, like a manual. Yeah. I think we talked about it before, like but we said it wasn't designer. like something you yeah. could change. Like there was a single Jasna, stamp. Jasna found somebody that had a manual printing press with a reconfigurable stamp type thing. Yeah, it was not. It was was it in Iqbalay? I feel like it was further yeah. away. Not, not, not for like printing entire news yeah, like newspaper, but like for flyers. I don't remember. Where I think it was, was. off patrol because we were sending off the. No, that was all by hand. Oh, that's why wait. I thought it was not patrol. Oh, P oh, patrol. We sent out the journal actual flyers, the copies flyers. of. Yeah, they were hand copies because yes. it took the the yeah. postmaster a long time to do it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yep. he was like geriatric and an absent minded one. Oh, okay. So it wasn't an opatro that you found a press. That okay. would have been. But she did find a press? 
She either found one or knew about some, or found out about somebody who had one. Holy shit, okay. tell us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I'm pretty well, sure, like, if my memory serves, it was the latter, um, and it was somewhere in Eglin that this machine existed. So Bjorn can, you know, learning about that, will say, yeah, I can go and find these people and see yeah. if I can get a machine like that. Yeah. And other than that, just developing uh, trustworthy uh, communication lines within that city. Alrighty. Yeah. So you spend some time, you know, developing trade routes and communication lines between Lila and Equalea. Um, as Bjorn is setting out to go into Eglin a little bit further, um, probably also he'll offer to open those lines with towns and settlements he comes across in that route. Yeah. Because you'll probably want a bit of camaraderie on both sides yep. to act as, because you're effectively on the border between the two. You're just right. on the Eaglin side of the border now. Yep. Um, <coughs> and so it will behoove you to... Oh, we're on the Eaglin side? Yep. This is technically in Eaglin. I did not know Aquileia that. Aquileia is still in Dane, but Lila is on the Eaglin side. I did not know that. Yep. Um, the Deadwood is basically the very northern part of the border. So now I have to find an artificer. Just so we know. Well, you know where to find one. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah, so that's... At least they're not at war. Yeah. With each other. Because they have abominations. Damn it. Diary is no good until you spill something on it. <laughs> or a journal or whatever. <laughs> and it's like the last of it, too. The last of the sky. Son of a bitch. There's still some in his glass. Look at that, friend. Uh, we do not have a fresh roll of hotels up here. Get that corona all over the table. Beautiful. Alright, um. Cool. Anything else? Or is that good <laughs> for more? Uh, that's oh, good. Geez, no. Alright. Uh, no. Oh, Um. There we go. This is all good. Um, <laughs> all good. I'm We're all good to now. Uh, <laughs> spend some time uh, at the uh, Grove uh, playing around with um, uh, Bronze, Bronze Storm. Okay. Trying to, Training with uh, it? Yeah. Do you have proficiency in quarter staffs? Yeah, it's okay. one of our, yeah. Well, there is a kind of training ground within the Grove. Good place to yeah, practice. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. that's yep. where I was, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's where I want to be, and then um, I'll help uh, uh, put Close in enough. what little bit of labor that Do I can. Do you have proficiency to... in uh, simple weapons or martial weapons or anything like that? Quarterstaff is one of the ones that okay, sorcerers get. Sorcerers okay, are yeah. like slings, daggers, uh, darts. Like crossbows and quarterstaffs. Pointed sticks. Yeah. Well, it's like <laughs> less of a pointed stick. The idea being is that if I train with it long enough, maybe I can convince Matt to let me earn full armor. Is that what you're going for? I think so. Okay. Maybe not on purpose. Um, I, I, I certainly wouldn't get it this week, but just. Yeah, uh, with one week of training, not quite, but. I have a, a um, building over yeah, here. Yeah, you make some progress towards right. it. And you can. So you can already like do. Um, what I'll call two weapon fighting oh, yeah. with both ends of the quarter staff, okay. um, because they're technically separate weapons. That bit of it, okay. Yeah, um, but again, like you know, it doesn't allow you to add the proficiency bonus to the second hit, so you yeah. want that with polearm master and the other stuff that it comes with. That'd so be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep. All right. So you train towards that using uh, the the resources that Cranmore has set up, and you get on your way to becoming more proficient with your new weapon. I find that like as weird as is, and I didn't expect it, but I actually uh, I actually kind of like the grove more more than I thought I would. So I find myself also just kind of helping out some of the other folks that are doing some of this work in, in the grove to try and get it up to get it up to snuff. Very cool. Yeah. So I'll yeah. Excellent. Good shit. Cranmore. Good shit. Three. Uh, do I get to roll on a follower table yet? Uh, yes. That's the only thing I think of besides what I've already said I'm doing, so. Uh, working on the go, working on the key, working on the wall, working on whatever the rubber on the to work on, working on scouting expeditions. Sure, <laughs> let's do that. Um, Building infrastructure for, like, our society. Yeah. Not, like, 
necessarily stone so infrastructure, but like bring in, have a place to go to. Government, <laughs> government <laughs> infrastructure. Uh, first, uh, roll me a. You don't have a guard. Can I roll on the on the druid table instead of the monk table? So I was gonna try and do something like a, a merge of the two, but yeah. if you want to just pick that you want to roll on the druid one, at least for this first time around, I'll let you go on what you think. Okay. Let's um, see what the dice say first. Is it a one hundred? Yeah, D one hundred. Okay, this one and this one. Yeah, it might actually just be compare the tables and see which one makes more sense for Cranmore. Yeah, it's kind of a hybrid thing. All right. Uh, thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yeah, Mason. You can get an Edzark, fifth level, as a retainer. What is, what is that? What is an Edzark? Or you can get a Conjurer as a fifth level retainer. The fuck uh, is an Edzark? First of all, what's an Edzark? Yeah. So the Edzark... Used to be an Ark. Not yeah. anymore. I'm tired. <laughs> oh, shit. That'd be it smells like scotch and ink. That's what I should expect. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the Edzark is... Like this! <laughs> I do not have a picture for him. It's a uh, guy named Joel. Uh, <laughs> he's already living here. He, yeah. he, he lives, lives here! <laughs> and he lays the down this way. There used to be an arc till I took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> he's our resident uh, Joe. <laughs> They've got a structure. Resident <laughs> <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Uh, they are. We already have a website, even. <laughs> they, have, they have light armor. They are primarily charisma and wisdom. They know about history and nature. They can cast Eldritch Blast, Blink, and Greater Invisibility. Is, is this like a? This is their stat block. Is this some guy? I mean, yes, it's a dude. Uh, it's like a like a minor druid or minor sorcerer type person almost, or warlock. Sounds a little bit like a uh, between a sork and warlock. Yeah, so probably less likely for. I for think him. so. That's yeah. I don't think I'm drawing that kind of person. Whereas the conjurer is intelligence and wisdom. Um, we can I can change around the spells for flavor, but this one probably works better. Okay. Um, the Let's spells say, not conjurer. so much, but the conjurer in general would make more sense. Yeah. So it's the spells by default are acid splash, stinking cloud, and conjure elemental. Yeah. Conjure elemental makes sense. Yes, it does. Stinking cloud and acid splash do not. <laughs> um, Calm down, man. <laughs> yeah. So I'd probably replace those two, but I'd say the Conjurer makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna. Why does go. Conjurer Elemental make sense? Yeah, yeah you'll see. Yeah, oh. If it ever comes up, you'll see. Yeah. <coughs> It'd be great if it came up. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know name tables. So what do I need to do now that we're talking about followers? Yeah. You're gonna have to tell me what I need to do to permanently oh. summon Geralt as a follower. Geralt. Mm. No, ah. Geralt, Geralt, my unicorn. Oh. <laughs> oh man! Oh, oh shit! Miss, <laughs> 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 I'll think on it. No, I'm gonna give you an answer right now. Um, I thought his name was George. I think it was originally Gerald, then we changed it to George. And I okay, know. that might be it. Um, yeah. So as as folks are coming into Lila. Uh, one in particular is kind of attracted to this grove that you've been building. It's a little bit more attuned with nature. Um, and her name is... Lila. No, it's not Lila. <laughs> uh, Layla. <laughs> Leia. Leia. I think it's Avina. Princess Leia. Avina. Avina. Please spell like, that. Like the spring? A-V-I-N-A. <laughs> like spring water? Is that a spring water? No. Oh gosh. No, it's not. It's it's similar though. You're talking about Evian? Evian. Yeah, that's it. Probably it. Yeah, E V I A N is a yeah, is a spring water. Avina is not a spring water. Yeah. Like no, no, it's saying that though. It's not that. Avian. Aquileia, like avian, Aquafina, the avian flu? Avian, avian. 
But nobody, like, you gotta, you gotta really help us out here with some Xenas, and like... Yeah, and, and then we can, and then we can be the like, ew, I'm Xeno. Oh, Avino is what I was thinking. <laughs> There's Avino. Avino is... It's a hand lotion. Alright, fine. Her name is Avina. Jesus. Jesus. It's what? What? It's not Avina. Jesus. Uh, it's... It's Avina. Avina. She said... He, or he said... No, but like, said everyone's Avina. like, oh, use different letters of the alphabet. No, Avina's so, 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 I'm gonna go with... I like Avina. Uh, I think Avina's I like good. Alright, like fine. Avina. Please stick with Avina. <laughs> okay. So Alright, so you find a fifth level conjurer follower named Avina. Who takes a great liking to your grove and wishes to learn more about the path of tranquility and follow your ways? Is it conjure? They, is they it said the hand lotion thing before you got it. <laughs> they gave the so, hand lotion answer in chat. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is a conjurer a wizard or a sorcerer or what? Uh, basically a wizard. Oh, okay. Historically, the word, like in most fantasy settings, seems to be more of like, like a, a somebody... white mage kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. Or that's like, like that splash seems really weird. For or at least that like conjurer, right? yeah. somebody that it's a like conjuration spell. So I think it's uh, going by like conjuration. School somebody that okay. brings so something out of nothing, like a, a life form from another plane or something. Okay, or a stink cloud. Uh. <laughs> I can do that with beans. <laughs> <laughs> from the plane of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? That's the perfect one. Norway. <laughs> yes. What's going on? Yep. Uh, the only other thing I'm really doing, other than reading, is jerking off. <laughs> that not so much. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> really, uh, that would not be the worst thing he's done in a cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> Slaughter a few people. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm looking Actually. for. Uh, People that would have an interest in either magic or uh, religion amongst the followers that they've brought in. For what purpose? Uh, just to kind of like man the for the religious people, like to have some like maybe priests or something to like clergy for the church. Clergy, yeah, for the church, and then the magic people to like maybe. Start up a, a like magic teaching small like magic teaching group or something amongst the peoples so that they can like you know be better prepared for something that comes their way. Okay, <laughs> so almost like getting a getting another like magic school going for like like the Luminaire Academy right yeah. here. Awesome. Can okay. I attend your religion school? It's not a religion school, but you're welcome to. Listen to the people. Don't. Okay. <laughs> no, I think he knows exactly where I'm going. <laughs> what? No, no, nothing. Uh, go ahead and roll a um, two checks for me. Um, investigation and persuasion. Investigation is one, not one. No, it's not. Roll again. <laughs> <laughs> It's a 10. Okay. Again, it's this kind of thing where you have a week. It's not like, oh, you can't just okay. like outright fucking fail. <laughs> uh, you can't find it. literally you nobody. Just like, I just rolled up. No, it's not. What? I just went whole week only running into Carilla. <laughs> just following her around. <laughs> like an idiot. Uh, it's a two plus numbers for persuasion. Five. Again, advantage. <laughs> uh, just roll good numbers, Brian. <laughs> okay, persuasion is a, a 21. Okay. Um, so you only find a couple of people. I'll say with a 10, you get a d10. Um, so you find seven people, uh, but all of them are willing to work in the church and or the school for you. Okay. Um, so, what's the distribution type thing? I'll say since you're a, a cleric, four of them are clergy and three of them are yeah. uh, teachers right. or magic <coughs> users of some sort. <coughs> so it's a mix. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and essentially, I would even maybe have it so that the uh, 
magic people have like offices in the cathedral or something. Oh yeah, there's like the cathedral has like an attached rectory and offices. Like it is cool. a it is a full on like large okay, cathedral. Cool. Uh, only maybe like maybe a third of it is taken up by like the nave and the altar region. Like, okay, cool. It's it's big. Right. Um, awesome. So go ahead and can I get Morthos? Actually, can I get anyone who's going to Aquileia to roll a uh, d20 for me? Might just be the two of you. I don't know if you're going well, to Aquileia to look for your clergy. I mean, or if you're just I might, going to if they're if they're s- announcing that they're going to Aquileia, I might tag along and read a book along the way. Okay. Yeah, so you go Are you guys announcing it? What am I rolling on? Just a d20. Are you announcing oh, that you're nine. going to Aquileia? Yeah. Okay. okay. Nine? You are not going? I'm gonna start getting really friendly with his clergyman. Cool. Ah, <laughs> Is this a, a skill check? Nope. Well, Straight d20. To oh. me, the clergymen haven't. I know. They're not real clergymen. They're not there yet. Is what I'm saying. Because I'm. this is a check to... Like, I'm oh, going to Aquila to find them. them. Yeah, it'll be like throughout the week. Or maybe, it'll maybe like, like maybe like one or two of them are there. Right, right. like yeah. you'll find one or two on the first cool. day. Yeah, continue. Yeah, I got a nine also. Nine, nine, Dennis. Eight. All right, so that is you find twenty six more people on the third week, um, bringing your total to. I don't know. Let me roll the d ten and figure out where it was between fifty and sixty. For which group, or like, is the is the number that we keep talking about? Is that like for the whole city, or is it the whole city? Yes, that is the number of people who are settling the area you're in. Cool. It's a very small town and a very large area at this point, but it will grow. Okay. Cool. Um, so by the end of the third week, you all have seventy nine people, uh, including or not including y'all and the Myrmidons. Um, y'all and the Myrmidons add another twenty seven. So. You know, so 106. How much money are we make from 79 people each week? <laughs> <laughs> so far, none, because it's all going back into the city. Okay, that's fair. Um, however, uh, as Fun so good progress is getting made on the walls and the keep, um, it is effectively to the point by the end of the third week where it's it's a functional fortification. This keep um, and the walls, while not perfect, will start to serve as walls. Um, you can get enough repaired that you can actually have a walk, a watch going around the city, uh, mostly manned by the Myrmidons at this point. Um, they largely take up the task of, of uh, you know, manning the, the city's defenses and that kind of thing. And on day, literally day 21, exactly three weeks after you all kind of start this restoration process, uh, one of the Illas who was on guard. I should really stop calling them the Illas and just go with the Myrmidons. Uh, but the Illas is so much fun to say. <laughs> uh, one of the Myrmidons actually comes rushing back to uh, the administrative building where you're kind of probably doing a little bit of your like translation work and where Carilla is. Yeah. Um, Must be urgent paperwork. Bursts in through the doors and says, There's a 413! <laughs> There's a what? No, no. A four, a I almost want to just end on that. Um, but no, it's... There's an army coming. Well, uh, uh... Banners? Yeah. Danish. And that is where we will end tonight's session. So bitch! Uh, oh, I should do the outro. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on tonight's episode of Beyond D&D. And may all your roles be lucky. Come back next week. Please do come back next week.